That's right, Mona. Not only are Nepal off to the World Cup, but so are Papua New Guinea, who will be joining Hong Kong, China and Nepal in the 2020 International Series getting underway tomorrow. It's so exciting to see the two ICC World Cup teams playing here in Hong Kong. Exciting doesn't even start to cover at Muscan. Both Nepal and PNG on the road to the USA and West Indies. And as part of their World Cup preparations, they have flown to Hong Kong for the 2024 Hong Kong Men's T20I Series. Both PNG and Nepal will be looking for a win in Hong Kong after recent tours didn't quite go their way. Oman winning 2-1 over Papua New Guinea and Nepal losing their final against the Netherlands in the Tri-Nations T20I in Nepal. The next five days will show where these two teams are at heading towards the 2024 ICC World Cup. But before the Hong Kong T20I Series begins, we have the Hong Kong-Nepal Friendship Series one-off T20I between Hong Kong China and Nepal. And now it's time to head out to the middle with Jay Dancing Honey and Aaron Bush. challenge to face Rohit thank you so much and congratulations on winning toss and best of luck for this game Nizankat you've lost the toss you're gonna be batting first happy with that yeah you know we know that these how these wicket play so yeah we are happy with whatever we are getting we have to make sure that we have to do well and a similar question a lot of cricket for you as well you're fresh off a tour to Qatar and uh, there were quite a few positives in that tour, including uh, DJ Rao, who did quite well. What's, uh, what's the mood in the dugout coming into this Friendship Cup and the next series? Well, you know, of course, there is lots of positive from uh, Qatar trip. And, you know, the good thing is that we are playing a regular cricket now. Uh, and that's what we wanted. And, you know, we are very much excited for this series as well. And moving forward to the Asia Cup qualifier. And DJ, you know, he, he performed really well. So, you know, the positive sign is our youngsters are doing really well, which is very good for Hong Kong cricket. And, of course, you know Nepal really well. Both these teams have played so much against each other. Yes, Nepal, you know, Nepal is a very good side and they have recently played some very good cricket uh, back home and we know that how good they are and, you know, we, we, we need to play against these top teams uh, and we are really looking forward to it. Zaka, it's always a pleasure watching the boys play. Good luck for today. So there you have it, the news from the middle. It's Nepal who won the toss and decided to have a bowl first. Aaron, I believe you've got us covered for the pitch report. Thanks, Jay. Yes, what a great day for the Friendship Series. The first time seeing Nepal in Hong Kong playing T20 internationals. Now, a bit of fun fact, the last time Nepal were in town, the game was washed out by a typhoon. That was back in 2017. Today, the weather's holding, it's cold, it's overcast, the ball's gonna zip around. We'll have a look at the pitch here, though. It is quite green, but what it is is rock hard. So there's gonna be runs available, not a lot of spin, Early on, few overs, it's going to be seaming around, but then the runs are going to flow. 160 seems to be a par on this score, on this pitch today. Jay, winning the toss for Nepal, good decision. Winning to, going to bowl. Yeah, I think it's especially a good idea if you don't know what a good score is, batting first on this wicket. And one thing that I find really interesting about Nepal in that series against Namibia and the Netherlands, four out of five occasions they crossed 180. So I think Nepal, they're very 
strong, threatening batting lineup. And if you're Hong Kong, like you said, I think you want a minimum of 160, but you want to be pushing 180 as much as possible. Yeah, and also there's one bowler for Nepal who's been having fun against uh, Hong Kong before. That's Karen. He loves it. He got a four for last time they played when in Nepal, and they'll be bowling. And also DLS is going to come into uh, effect. If we have any rain, bowling first is always better for the, the chase in the second innings. Yeah, good call there. I took a quick look at the forecast. I'm personally keeping my fingers crossed. I'm quite optimistic. But no, you said it. Someone like Karen Casey, a class performer. He's taken 85 wickets in 60 T20Is. He can give it a whack as well down the order. So I think someone like Karen Casey, one of the premier strike bowlers for Nepal. And if they want to restrict Hong Kong to a manageable, chaseable target, how Karen Casey performs I assume with the new ball is going to be a big factor today. Well, it's going to be fantastic. We're getting underway in 25 minutes' time. Stick around. Plenty of the broadcast, including the teams, coming up very shortly here live on Cricket Hong Kong Broadcasting.
Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tin Kuang Road Recreation Ground for the Friendship Cup. It's a one-off game between Hong Kong and Nepal. But that's the big news, isn't it? Nepal are here. They're in Hong Kong. They're in town. We see more and more fans starting to come in to the Tin Kuang Road Recreation Ground. We're all so excited after an already busy and eventful home season. I'm one of your commentators for the day, Jay Danciani, and I'm being joined by Aaron Bush. Good afternoon, Jay. Yes, what an exciting, exciting Friendship Series game we're going to have today. I'm so excited to see Nepal back in town. I believe it's been all oh, seven years almost. Back in October 2017, Nepal were last year. That was for a one-day game, one-day series. This is the first time seeing them for a T20i, Jay. It's going to be a great day here at Tin Kuang Road. Yeah, no doubt that series you're referring to was part of the World Cricket League Championship. So yeah, no, it's been a long time, been seven years. See on your screens as well, Nepal getting ready for that team photo. And yes, we're just four minutes away from the first ball being bowled. And of course, we got PNG as well later on in the season. It's a couple of days from now, in fact. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Hong Kong China. Yep, it's the captain as always, Nazaka Khan. Vice captain Yasim Motaza, Antriman Rathu will come in at number three. Baba Hyatt, the big hitting Baba Hyatt who won the tournament for Hong Kong China in Qatar just last week. Zaz Khan, Martin Kutzia, Atik is in the side. Atik Iqbal will be bowling today. Jamie Atkinson with the gloves on. That means that. Uh, Zishan Ali will be having a rest in today's Friendship Series. Raz, na, Nazrullah Rana, Isan Khan and Nanjay Rao. And for Nepal, it's the skipper, Rohit Kumar Poundal, right up top. Kushal Burtel, the very dangerous Kushal Burtel. I'm sure we're going to see him open the batting. Binod Bandari with the gloves back into this Nepal setup. Akash Chand, one of those very exciting under-19 performers, was fantastic at the under-19 World Cup. He's there. Bibek Kumar Yadav, Arif Sheikh, Sandeep Jora, Gulshan Kumar Jha, another young, exciting talent. He's a big hitter, the left-hander, can bowl with decent pace as well. Got Pratis GC, Sagar Dakal, and Rasid Khan rounding off this 11. Yeah, Jay, we were talking out of the toss about one person who loves playing against Hong Kong, took four for 36 back in 2019. Karen KC, he's having a rest today. We should see him in the rest of the series, but not playing today. Yeah, someone should have passed us a memo. We talked up Karen KC so much. And I think more, it's, it's, it's really a matter of just giving him a rest. He's a fast bowler as well. You're fresh off a plane journey. You got that big tri-series coming up as well. That kicks off tomorrow. It's gonna be Hong Kong, China against Nepal once again. In any case, the umpires for today, Niaz Ali and John Prakash walking out to the middle. And a big congratulations as well to Ramasamy Venkatesh from the ACO, who just umpired in his 100th international game. Another source of pride here for cricket in Hong Kong. We've got some fantastic match officials, quite a lot of them actually, for an associate nation. Day teams coming out now. Nepal, if you're just joining us, have won the toss, elected to bowl, good decision, and batting for Hong Kong, China. It will be Martin Kutsia and the captain, Nazaka Khan, there on screen. Exciting, exciting stuff. Happy for Martin Kutsia as well. Did pretty well in Qatar. I know he got at least one player of the match award there, Martin Kutsia. So it was nice to see him find some form finally. Martin Kutsia, we know how dangerous he can be. I think Nepal will know how dangerous he can be as well. They've seen it firsthand when Hong Kong, China have gone down to Nepal. Nizakat Khan, well, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever. The Hong Kong, China skipper. Can't wait to see him in action. Martin will take strike. Nazaka down the non-striker's end, opening the bowling down for Nepal. It'll be from the softball ground end. Now, Jay, we know this because we commentate here at Tin Kuang Road Recreation Ground a lot, but usually you start the bowling from our end down at the Argyle Street end, so you don't have to bowl that 20th over. 
that's got the very short boundary to aim at, but Nepal have decided to pull the trigger and go from the softball ground end first. Yeah, time after time we see visiting teams just failing to take that into account. It was a big factor for Japan as well when they played Hong Kong. They bowled that final over from this end, but it also means that you bowl the final over of the power play from this end with the short straight boundaries. I think we all remember what happened to that left arm spinner, Charlie Hens as well. He disappeared for a lot of runs in that sixth over. But it's a new dawn, it's a new day here at TKRG. So good, like I said, to have Nepal with us in Hong Kong after seven years. It's been too long. We have a slip in position already. Here's Kushal Bertel at first slip. Nizaka on strike, first ball. Oh, apologies, could see on strike. Inside edge that onto his pad there. Interesting to see Arif Sheikh opening things up here for Nepal. He's not the quickest bowler, is Arif Sheikh. But I think he's going to enjoy bowling in these conditions. We've seen someone like Kutsia as well. He tends to struggle a little bit. There's some early movement. Driven. No struggles there. That's been drilled through extra cover for four. First runs for Katsia. First runs for Hong Kong China. Katsia continuing on his good form from last week in Qatar. Watch the replay here. Onto it early. Comes forward. Picks the gap. Even though they had the fielder out there at long off. First boundary on the board. Stands up to this one, just drifts it out to point and dot ball. Yeah, good stuff there. Just dragged back his length. R of Shake recognized that he overpitched there to Katsia. But too much width as well on that boundary ball. Bit of a commentator's curse. We were talking up R of Shake before that half volley. Here he comes in again. Another good dot ball followed up. Couple of dot balls after that boundary. And important for Nepal as well to start well in this power play. If you're just a little bit off against Kutsia and Nizakat Khan, they can go big in that power play. Bit of a change in field now. Yeah, that mid-on just dropping back to a long-on for Kutsia. Going to go for the tip and run on this one. Chance the arm. Get through safely. And yeah, Azakat Khan averages just a shade over 20 in T20Is, does the Hong Kong skipper. But he's a much, much better player than that. Found some runs as well against Japan towards the end of that series. If he can put in a big performance against a leading associate nation like Nepal, just put some of those critics to rest. Last ball coming up. Zakat on strike, gets bad on ball. Won't get a run for it though. That is the end of the first over. Hong Kong, China, five for no loss. And if you're just joining us, it's Hong Kong, China, who were put in to bat after Nepal won the toss. A very useful toss to win, especially when you consider that there is a chance of DLS coming into play. I'm optimistic, though. The forecast is not looking too bad. Might get a light drizzle. In any case, we have Pratish GC into the attack, the left armor. Yeah, picked up a player of the match award as well in that tri-series against Netherlands and Namibia. The left armor. Very excited to see him in action. Of course, if some of the big names for Nepal are missing on this tour of Hong Kong. No Sompal Kami, no Dipendra Singh Airi. So a chance 
some of those players who they're not automatic picks in the 11 but a chance for them to establish themselves as more regular members of this Nepali setup yeah Patrice just playing his 6 T20i he's played five so far youngster not yet 20 he'll be bowling from the Argyle Street end the short end and he'll be bowling to an inform Martin Kutsia left arm over and a good first up delivery watchful Kutsia just dribbles it back down to mid off and good spirits aren't they the Nepalese team. I don't think they're going to mind this chilly weather too much. A lot of them living in mountainous conditions. One slip in place for Pratis. Comes down the wicket, gets a huge top edge. Too much on it. Goes all the way to the boundary for four. Yeah, fortuitous there for Martin Gutzia. But on this occasion, fortune favoring the brave. If you're the left lunch came down the track tried to smother the swing wild swing at that that thick edge just beating short third it's the second boundary for Hong Kong China both boundaries coming off the bat of Martin Kutsia the dangerous Martin Kutsia I think what we saw in that replay as well you could see that just shadow batting Martin Kutsia he wanted to go straighter towards those short straight boundaries shuffling the field the slip out, moving it to a backward point. Then a wide, like almost third slip. Still nobody outside the circle behind deep third. Practice resets. And he's gone big on this one. One bounce over the rope for four. Yep, that's exactly what he wanted to do off the previous ball this time making no mistake going straight getting back-to-back -back fours here could see a these didn't do too much wrong there it's bowling on a length too easy that for could see doesn't mind if he's not to the pitch of the ball he's gonna go through with the shot it's that kind of a player tailor-made the power play in T20 eyes. Yeah, and we talked about it last over, Jay, about bowling from this Argyle Street end. Shortish boundaries. They will be attacked. And again, we mentioned it's going to be the end of the power play from this end and also the final over if Hong Kong China bat through their 20. Back to back boundaries. The left armour will need to find something. Up to the wickets for the keeper. Oh, there was some indecision, but sent back. Good dot ball. Yeah, two changes in field there. The keeper coming up to the stumps, but Kushal Berthel as well dropping back from mid on to long on. No doubt in recognition of that short boundary that you were talking about. See a bit of a discussion as well here between Kutsia and Nizakat Khan. Easy singles available there on the leg side. This time it is on the leg side, but straight to the field, just a single. There you go, my crystal ball. Clearly reliable as ever. But Nazaka, he's only faced the solitary delivery so far. Still looking to get off the mark. I think we've seen this as well between this pair in the last year, year and a half. Sometimes Nazaka, with Kutsia going strong at the other end, he doesn't mind just giving him the strike and letting the aggressive, the aggressive Kutsia just take on the mantle of aggressor. Could see has taken a single on the fifth ball twice now, holding the strike for the next over as Nazakat faces his second delivery. First one from Pratis and gets through him. Well kept, well bowled, dot ball to end the second. Good one for Hong Kong China though. They're 14 for no loss. Let's take a look at this replay. I think it might have come back in to the right hander. No, in fact, just going on with the angle. Actually a pretty decent over there from Pratis. Nine off it. That included that edge down to deep third 14 for no loss after two still very early days and if you're just joining us on this broadcast it's cricket hong kong china who were put into bat after losing the toss 
Five off the first over from Arif Sheikh. He's set to continue. We're bowling to Martin Kutsia, who's coming off some huge form in Qatar. A 74, 102 and 31 in the three games of that bilateral series. And he's doing well today, 14. He's on strike. Just eases it onto the leg side for that single. That'll give Nazakat Khan a bit more of a taste this over. Yeah, he's farmed most of the strike, hasn't he, Kutsia? Wonder if we're going to see some movement here from Arif Sheikh. Still got a slip in place. Kushal Berthal waiting for that catch. Upish in the air. Out! First wicket falls for Hong Kong, China. The captain has to go. Nazaka Khan. Yeah, very loose there. Soft dismissal from the Hong Kong, China skipper. I'm not too sure what he was trying to do. Arif Sheikh. After over pitching in that first over, he's made that correction in length. This is his first wicket. Yeah, it looked like maybe it just stopped in the surface as well there. Nizakat Khan. Gone for a duck. Doesn't trouble the score as the Hong Kong China skipper. And in the third over, after 2.2, Hong Kong China are 15 for one. And at number three, it's that familiar figure of Anshuman Rath. Fans in Hong Kong, fans in Nepal, and fans of associate cricket will know him so, so well. One of the finest batters on the associate cricket scene. He's got a bit of work to do. Coming in to join his HKCC teammate, Martin Kutsia. Together they've caused a lot of carnage at the top of the order for the Hong Kong Cricket Club. But today, they're going to have to shine against strong team like Nepal. Yes, the left-handed Anshuman Rath coming to the crease. A top score, 72 not out. But always destructive in the left-right combination now. Will cause some fielding changes for Nepal, getting that wicket. Just the third over. They'll be happy with that. The runs coming for Hong Kong. But a first wicket, always good. Anshuman Rath is set, shaped. Coming in from the softball ground end. Oh, he's cut that straight to the fielder, but gone through. So they'll get through for at least a single. Yes, just the single in the end. A bit loose there. Misfield allows him to get off the mark. Springs could see her back on strike. I wonder if that fall of the, the wicket, losing his partner, Nizakat Khan, that's just going to change the approach here from Kutsia. Cut away, behind point, but no misfield this time. Good fielding, keeping it to a dot. Yeah, good stuff there from Pratis. That backward point. Going exactly a runner ball here. You can see those Nepal fans as well. Yeah, a lot of them very cold. They've got those thick down jackets. They've come prepared. I think I can see a flag as well somewhere in the distance. Shake. To could see her again. Goes big this time. That's going a long way. That's going to be the first maximum of the day. Yeah, he's gone big there, could see her. Didn't look to overhit that. The aggressive right hander. See some of those Na Nepal fans. A lot of fetching to do. Just a little bit too leg side here from Shake. Oh. Wonderful, could see a bit of a check shot there. Over deep mid wicket, gets a maximum. He's into double figures just like that, into the 20s in fact. Gives himself some room this time, but just plays it, eases it onto the leg side for a single. Clever playing, keep the strike. End of the third over, a successful one for Nepal. Hong Kong, China, 23 for one. And nine runs off that over again. More importantly, from a Nepal perspective, the big wicket of Nizakat Khan. I see a change in bowling from the Argyle Street end. Gulshan Jar coming in. 
Right arm medium fast. He'll have the aggressive Martin Kutsia. As I said, he had a huge Qatar tour. Got himself a century, plus a 70 odd. Scored over 200 runs in the three games and he's continuing on here at the moment. 22 off 14. Three fours and that maximum last over. And Wilson Jar will be bowling from the Argyle Street end with the short boundaries long. Will we see Kutsia attack? Not first off. Good delivery and just eased to a shortish mid wicket. No run. He said at the toss, talking to certain people out there before the toss, 160 par. So that's uh, the score at least Hong Kong China will be looking to because it's a good bowling lineup from Nepal and it's just a good as batting lineup as well. Jar comes in again over the wicket to Kutsia. Comes down the wicket. Big swing and a miss. Fresh airy there. Seen plenty come off the middle of Martin Kutsia's bat. Not that one. Watch the replay. Comes down the wicket. Oh, it kept going. It just missed the top of that leg stump as well. Ushad Jar will be very happy looking at that. Looks like Kutsia was expecting it to move away a little. Didn't, kept following him. Almost took the top of that leg stump. Two dot balls to begin with for the fourth over. This time, just eases it through the gully region down to deep third for a single. Rotate the strike, bring Antrim and Ruth back on strike. Just the single off the one delivery he's faced so far. We would have watched those deliveries from Jar down the non-striker's end. Realised just how close that went to Martin could see his stumps as he charged. Now the left-hander, Archer Munrath. Sizing up the field, he's there's a deep square leg. Going behind square now. Out on the ropes and a deep third. Just the two outside in the power play. As Jar comes into Archer Munrath. Just eases it again. Plenty of fielders on the offside, but good running between these two. Get through for the single. Like much of the top order for Hong Kong China, these two out in the middle play their domestic cricket with Hong Kong Cricket Club here in Hong Kong. So plenty of time, not only just for Hong Kong China, but locally playing together, running between the wickets. Good understanding. At the moment, Archman Rath is happy to play the Supporting role, getting the singles. Getting the big hitting, Martin could see her back on strike. Two balls remaining in the fourth. And again, tries to ease it behind point. There's a mix up, Martin could see her. That's a direct hit, that was out. Martin could see her fell over. Would have been out at the striker's end as well. Confusion reigns. Both batters managed to scamper back in time. Antrim and Rath had completely and utterly given up. Martin could see it was lying on the ground at the time. How there wasn't a wicket there, I'm not really sure, but both batters for Hong Kong China survive. One ball remaining in the fourth. Gulshan to Martin Kutsia. This time lofts over the infield. One bounce over the rope for four again. Similar stroke that he played earlier. That one there clearing the infield easily. No one out on the ropes and he gets another boundary to finish off the fourth. Hong Kong China, 29 for one. Likes that mid-wicket region as Martin Kutsia. This one onto it early, outside off. Looking it over the infield, one bounce. Shorter boundary towards Ting Pong Road. That's where that box, the scorer's box is there. You can see on your screen. Happy to attack it. In the end, it was a decent over for Hong Kong China. Six coming from it. Current run rate of 7.25, handy. Losing one early wicket. 
less handy. These two putting together a partnership, 14 now. It's the debutante today for Nepal with ball in hand from the softball ground and Akash Chant. Bowling to Anshaman Rath. Oh, and he pokes the bat at that one. Good first up delivery for the debutante. And gets a round of applause from his teammates. And just poking at it as it drifted away. A bit of shape. Big cheer for Akash as he comes in. This time, again, does he get the edge? Umpire John Prakash says no. Chan thought it was a catch. Wasn't a lot of interest from the keeper. Just cut him in half. Chan thought he had it. Finger went up. It's not his finger that's important that goes up. Umpire Prakash said no edge on that one. Good delivery all the same. Starting with two dot balls. Cash Chant just troubling the left-hander with the angle. Right arm over, pushing it away at the moment. Anch just pushing the bat at it. Will he look to attack this ball? He gets better bat on ball, but it's still off the toe. It was behind point, but will get off strike. Another single in the books for him. Mark could see her now. 27 off 19, four fours and a six. Yeah, you read that right. Hong Kong, China are 30 for one, and Martin has 27 of them. The captain, Nazaka Khan, departing in the third over for a duck. Three runs to Antrim and Rath, which means it's been very tidy bowling so far from Nepal. Into the fifth over, no extras. All runs coming off the bat. Half an over left of the fifth. Martin could see her on strike. That one's tried to guide through the gap, and it gets through the gap. What a brilliant stroke that was from Martin Kutsia. Finds the rope again, this time cutting the gap between gully and backward point, and gets it to the rope for another four. I'm trying to replay here. Just got the wrist on it late, found that gap. Two fielders waiting there. Backward point and gully on the circle as well so it's not like they were in close and it flew past them it just picked the gap split them in half two balls remaining in the fifth Akash Chan in again bit of a shuffle gets around on it there's somebody down there though and takes the catch the second wicket falls he got four he fell into that trap Martin Goodseer came down Whipped it round the corner. I'm not even sure if he knew there was a player hiding down there at deep backward square leg. But there was, and he's got to go. Hong Kong, China, 34 for two. Look at that on the replay. He's pulled himself right outside off to try to get that into that exact spot. But there was a player just waiting for him. And the big innings comes to an end. A big wicket from the ball. Martin Kutsia gone for 31. And it brings the big hitting. Bubba Hyatt to the crease inside the fifth over. One ball remaining. Bubba Hyatt's been short on runs of late, except in Qatar, except in the super over to decide the series. He came out, faced that super over, smashed 21, won the game for Hong Kong, China and the series. And now he's out there with 15.1 overs remaining. Need to put a partnership together with Archer Munrath. Hyatt will be on strike. The debutant, Akash Chan, gets a wicket in his first over. And what a huge wicket it was too. Martin Kutsia, the very dangerous Martin Kutsia, back in the sheds for 31. Thank you. 
Slip in place for Hyatt. Chant from the softball ground end. Oh, gets a leading inside edge down on the leg side. Thought about a single as well. No run there. A successful over for Nepal and the debutante, Akash Chan. Hong Kong, China after five, 34 for two. Time for me to step out of commentary and have a break and taking you through the next five overs to drinks, Jay Dunsing Honey. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. What a massive wicket that was. The wicket of Kutsia for 31. He's done most of the damage for Hong Kong, China so far. It's been a different story from the other end. Anshi and Nazakat. Well, they haven't had much of the strike. Nazakat, he's back in the dugout. It's Barber and Anshi at the crease for Hong Kong. Final over the power play. Here's Gulshan Zha. Nice and straight. It's exactly what you want to be doing. I'm so pumped for Akash Chand as well. It was fantastic, like I said, at that under-19 World Cup. Taking five wickets against Afghanistan. Got Gulshan Zha as well. He struggled a bit, in fact, at the Under-19 World Cup at Gulsan Zah. But he burst onto that scene a few years ago with that famous perfume ball that went viral on social media. Bang goes Anshi. All the way goes Anshi. Roth first maximum for him. Moves on to nine. An authoritative pull shot over deep mid-wicket. Bit of pressure here on Gulsan Zha. See, just a little bit too short here. And if you're going to pull short, you've got to bend your back. You've got to get it up nice and high. Just sat up nicely for Anshi, who made no mistake. And Niaz Ali gets those arms up. 40 for 2 now. Four balls left in the first power play. Mid on, mid off. Up in the circle. Oh, mistimed that. Not happy with himself there, aren't she? Sets himself very high standards. Does the left-hander. I think what he was trying to do is just pierce that gap as well between extra cover and mid-off. If you're Gulshan Jha, that's more the kind of line that you want to be bowling. You don't want to be too short, too straight to Anshi. Yeah, again, too straight. Early call of two. Optimistic call there. They side against that second run. It's into double figures now, Anji Rath. See that winning and score predictor as well at the bottom of your screen, 165. I think Hong Kong China would actually be relatively happy with that. But ideally, like we said just after the toss, Aaron and I were speaking about it. Ideally, you want to be pushing 180, 185. Down the leg side, signaled wide by Niaz Ali. But a big effort ball, that, from Gulsan Zha. We heard a big grunt as well at the point of release. He's already got some sweat on that brow, which is interesting because I tell you what, I'm definitely not sweating in the comm box right now. It is very, very chilly at TKRG. Barber looking to get off the mark. Again down the leg side. I said this before, we'll say it again. He's got some gas. Gulsan Zha. He's not quite found his radar so far. And of course, there's no Sompal Kami on this tour for Nepal. So it gives the likes of Pratis and Gulsan Zha as well to get some more overs under their belt. That's the thing with someone like Gulsan Zha. 
He's got multiple strings to his bow. Very aggressive, dangerous left-hander. First runs there for Barber. Easy single to point. Yeah, always nice to get that first run under your belt. Just get that monkey off your shoulder. Yeah, like I said earlier, he burst onto the scene with that perfume ball. But since then, it's his batting that's starting to emerge as a more dangerous suit. You won't actually see Gulson's uh, on your screen right now. And that's because he's got a massive run-up that starts nearly at the boundary. Last ball. Worked away. They're thinking about two. Yeah, Fielder in the deep does really well. Keeps it down to only one. But a good over that for Hong Kong China. After the power play, it's 45 for two. Nepal fans, you know whatever Nepal is doing, wherever they're playing, the fans are going to pack in to the ground. It's a cold morning here at TKRG. But these Nepal fans, they don't care. They're here to see their heroes in action. I'm sure they're looking forward to maybe getting a few cheeky selfies later on today. With back live, see that helicopter signal just now from John Prakash? Signaling the end of Power Play 1. Good gas on that. It's just one. Already picked up a wicket, Akash Chand. They're going at just a shade under eight runs and over here. 46 for two, Hong Kong China after 6.1. They were put in to bat. Martin Kutsia smashed 31 at the top of the order. But this man, the promising, the exciting, the immensely talented Akash Chand, Sent him packing. The big wicket of Martin Kutsia. Can he get another big one? Barber still looking for his first boundary. No boundary there, but he comes through for a single. Bit of a test here for Akash Chand as well. Bowling to the established duo of Anshi Rat and Babar Hayat. Not so established in this innings, but for a long, long time, they've been highly regarded in associate cricket. And Babar, of course, has played T20 leagues in Nepal before. So Nepal fans, they know all about Babar Hayat and how dangerous he can be. Oh, that was quick, but even quicker off the bat. It burst through the hands of mid-wicket. What a way to bring up 50 for Hong Kong. They're 51 for two. We're only halfway through the seventh over here. That's the second time that Anshiro has jumped onto a pull shot. And he was up to the challenge. You could see he was expecting that. Absolutely dismissed it to deep mid-wicket. What a treat he is to watch when he's in full flow. Punch of the gloves there between Barber and Anshi. They love playing against Nepal. They love playing against higher ranked associate opposition. Someone like Anshi, I feel like the stronger the opposition, the better he delivers. Guided this time. Oh, what? Amazing. I think that's Bertel there. I hope he's okay. He's just wringing his fingers there. Saved at least a boundary. Look at that. Oh, wonderful. Athletic stuff. We're going to see a lot of this as well from PNG later on this weekend. 
and going into next week. It's so nice to see once again Cricket Hong Kong China getting high quality opposition down to the city state. It's been a long and eventful and amazing home season so far here in Hong Kong China. That's what they've come to see the fans. Six off the over so far, two balls left. Again, another pull shot in the air for a bit. Decides not to go for that catch. Deep in wicket. Wisely so. Just a single there for Anshi. Allows him to move on to 17. He's looked really good so far. Anshi Rath. I don't think he's played a single false shot in this 14 ball innings. Yeah, the Cricket Hong Kong China support staff. Got Panda Man as well. I think that's Panda Man there. Could be wrong. Worked away in the leg side. Intelligent stuff. Single to close out the seventh over. A good one for Hong Kong China. Eight runs off it. After seven, it's 53 for two. Might be a chilly morning here at TKRG. From a Hong Kong China perspective, things just beginning to heat up. After a well earned break, Aaron Bush is back with us to walk us through the last three overs of the first half of the innings. Left armor, back into the attack. Oh, playing a miss again. Just going on with the angle. I like this keeper up to the stumps, pushing the ball past the outside edge. Just easing it, looking for that feather. Not coming on that delivery. 53 for two in the eighth. Worked away in the leg side again from Barbara Hayat. Three of his four singles have been worked into that mid wicket leg side region. We've seen it from all the batters so far from Hong Kong China. One takes the lead, the other just eases the singles. Wise batting. Antrim and Rath back on strike, 17 from 14. There's another breeze, a cool breeze blows across Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground. Yeah, more than just cool. That is straight up Sorry. cold, mate. I feel like I just heard you shivering on the mic as well. <laughs> teeth chattering, this northeast <laughs> monsoon blowing in down from mainland China, keeping us on our toes. Early call for a single. Got great understanding as well. This pair, they've batted so much together on she and Barber over the years. One part of Barber's game I've really liked in the last year or so, he's really worked on his fitness, therefore he's running between wickets as well. Even if he's playing the supporting role, we know how big and devastating he can be, but at the moment, push the singles, run hard, put the pressure on the fielders. Rotating the strike, he gets back on strike four from six deliveries. Tidy over so far for Nepal and Pratish. Pushed. Again, another single here for Barber. Yeah, good point you make. But Barber just improving his fitness. We've seen that in the field as well. Took a scintillating catch against Japan just a few weeks ago. That's what we call a specky, that one from Bubba. Flying up in the air down near the softball ground ropes, one-handed in the highlight reels. Oh, 
backs away. It's been sliced down to deep backward point. Again, just one. So good over so far from the left armor. Former under-19 player as well. He's come through that age group pathway for Nepal as Pratish GC. He's actually bowled better than those figures suggest. Yeah, he got martined in the first over, but this one's much more tidy. And he's athletic. Good bit of work off his own bowling. Keeps it down to a dot. Just four runs off that over. Yeah, good delivery. Might have been a slight change of pace as well. Diving effort. Kept it to a dot. A much more tidy over there from Patish. Just the four off it. He's now two overs. None for 13. Hong Kong China 57 for two. Yeah, 57 for two after eight. See again a shot of that supporters dug out over there got a lot of children as well in today getting some throwdowns from mom and dad oh my god that crowd just keeps ballooning doesn't it i think we've got at least 80 90 maybe 100 people in here at tkrg and they just keep coming in don't they i think in that second innings as well with the likes of kushal Bertel, rohit kumar Baudel as well we're likely to see them at the top of the order. It's going to be a good one. Spread the word. Come down to TKRG. Nepal's in town. That's guided. Straight to short third. Yadav into the attack for Nepal from the softball ground end. Bibek Yadav, number 71. Not an easy time to come into bowl either. Partnership of 23 so far for the third wicket. Oh, he's missed out on that. And she what signaled wide there, in fact, by John Prakash. Going around the wicket to the left hander. He's just pushed it too far outside and and just backed off that one. Put the bat away, make sure there's no edge. Take the extra, which have been few and far between for Nepal today, tidy bowling. Again off the back foot, this time straight to the fielder. Yeah, you can see that crowd in the background. Ooh, that very cold crowd in the background. A lot of hands in pockets. Cold they are, but loud they are also. Keeping themselves warm, cheering on. A lot of Nepal cheering on. You can hear them as the bowlers coming in. Yadav. That was a big grunt there from the bowler. He's been pushed down to long off for one. But yeah, you're right. That Nepali crowd making a lot of noise. Yelling out a lot of encouragement. Some advice as well, I think. It's a good way to stay <laughs> warm at least. Keep the vocal cords warm. 58 for two now. Just the single so far with two balls remaining in the ninth. Baba just on five. He's on strike. I think a big reason why we... Saw a big chill. Get back to that in a second. Barber doing Barber thing. Worked away for one. But another reason we heard that big cheer is because they saw Monty Desai, the head coach of Nepal, just walking through that large, dense crowd. Yeah, he's a very popular man, isn't he? Monty Desai. This man. Well, he's popular in Hong Kong, aren't she, Rath? 20 off 20. No single there. Very good over for Nepal. Once again, just two runs off it. Only six runs coming in the last two overs. After nine, it's 59 for two. Yeah, last two overs have been very tidy for Nepal. Pegging it back. Got that run rate now down under seven, 6.56. And still a ball remaining. Yeah, you're right. Forgot about that extra delivery. Last ball coming up. Crashed away into the leg side. Just one. Yeah, we'll try and fix that score for you as soon as possible. Nine overs gone. Anshi is in the 20s, the left-hander.
Yeah, it's 61 for two, in fact, after nine. Apologies for that momentary lapse. Yeah, but the run rate now under seven, 6.6. Was well over seven and eight as we head towards the drinks break. One over remaining. Yeah, another over here for Arif Sheikh. Change of ends for him. And I wonder if you're going to see these two batters trying to target that straight boundary. He's looking leg side for now. Backs away. Can't find the gap. Rohit doing a great job there, the skipper. Keeping it down to one. Love the anticipation as well there from Rohit Kumar Powdell. Just off screen there. That's the thing as a good fielder. It's not just about having safe hands. It's about almost having the sixth sense of where the ball's going to end up. Goes high, goes very long. Kushel Berthel, just a spectator. Oh, that's out of the ground. That's 600 Hong Kong dollars we're never going to see again. Babar Hayat, what a way to move into double figures. Umpire Sean de Cruz holding on, but that ball just stayed inside the fence in the end, but didn't really matter. It went a long way over the ropes. Big six from Babar. We know he can do that. He's just absolutely got that one in the slot. Yeah, I think we might have gotten it back. I'm not sure. It's a good way to stamp your authority on this contest. Bang! Again! Flat batted this time over. Long off. Babar Hayat goes back to back. Another maximum for the big right-hander. The Nepal fielders are yelling catch, catch, but there's no catch on this one. It looked like it was going to be flat to the... Ropes, but shorter boundary. Bubba knows this. He has just swatted that out of the middle. It's gone sailing over the rope. Back to back sixes for Bubba Hyatt. And you know we're going to see that on his Instagram reels tonight. Bubba Hayat storming into the highlights package. Can he go three in a row? No, it's a good comeback. Well done, Arif Sheikh. Right in the block hole. Keeps it down to a dot. This is what we were saying as well. When you bowl that first over from the softball court end, it means you're sort of just exposing the short straight boundary. Again, straight, again, six. Doesn't bother moving for that, does Barber. Does it time and time again at TKRG. Loves those short straight boundaries. That's three sixes in the last four deliveries for Barber and Hong Kong China. This one went out of the ground, out of the slot, out of the ground. And a new ball required. Big six, three in the over. This is the way to go into the drinks break for Hong Kong China. We were talking about those two inexpensive overs as well for Nepal. But now Hong Kong, China, they've stormed back in style. 19 off this over already. Courtesy three sixes from Barber. Still one ball left. Rohit Powdell now stationed at a straightish long on. Cut away this time. There's work to do in the deep. He's not going to cut it off. Deep cover, just a spectator. Huge, huge over for Hong Kong, China. 23 off it. At the halfway point, the home side, 84 for two. What an over from Bubba Hyatt. Saying the run rate had dropped down under seven, but not when you put 23 runs off one over. That's beautifully played. Placed it to perfection. Got to the rope, 23 runs, including 22 to Bubba Hyatt himself to take into the drinks break, 84 for two. Huge gust blowing. Drinks break here at Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground. Aaron Bush with you. You can see 10 overs done. The run rate now 8.4. It's these two put together a 50 run partnership. 51, 50 runs of 31 deliveries, including two fours, four sixes. And we are going to have an interview as we wait at the drinks break. Joining us from Hong Kong, China, the speedster. He's out of the side today. We're going to find out why a Yu Shukla coming up very shortly. 
rope side interview. Muscan there, ready to go shortly. And if you're just joining us, Nepal won the toss. They elected to bowl, and for a lot of that first ten overs, you'd say they were in charge. They got two wickets. The big wickets of Nazakat Khan and Martin Kutsia, both openers back in the sheds. But now these two, Baba Hyatt and Anshuman Rath, getting the runs on the board. He said par is 160, 180 would be preferred if you've got wickets in hand in these final 10 overs. Hong Kong China can go large with their batting lineup. We're ready for that pitch side interview. Muskan being joined by Hong Kong speeder, speedster Ayush Shukla. Uh, from Hong Kong, China, right here with us as the score stands, 84. Great start off. What do you feel? I mean, absolutely, yeah. So I think it was a good first 10 overs. Uh, the last over was very good for us, um, especially with the batsman set. Uh, the next 10 overs should be good for us, and we're looking to get a good score. And we have been playing, Hong Kong China has been playing with Nepal, you know, a couple of series, a couple of games before. Does this feel familiar? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Where is this going to go? I mean, obviously, we know uh, Nepal are a strong team. They've just qualified for the World Cup. Um, so playing against them is obviously great for us. Uh, we've played a couple of games with them um, over the last year and this year. So, um, yeah, it's always great. Um, looking forward to tomorrow and the rest of the series. That's fantastic. And let's talk a little bit more about your experience so far. You've played with Hong Kong China for, for a long time now, a couple of years. You know, how, what's your experience been and what are you looking forward to uh, more of? I mean, absolutely. Yeah, I came up through the ranks, played under 16, under 19, and now uh, at the men's uh, squad. It's, it's been great. You know, I have a lot of fun. Um, obviously, I came in pretty young, but uh, I've got a lot of experience over the last three years uh, being with the team and it's great to travel with them play high quality cricket um, looking forward to a lot of them a lot more tournaments coming up forward for us thank you which one in particular are you looking forward to I mean obviously Asia Cup qualifiers World Cup qualifiers but regaining ODI status is our biggest goal so um, if we can get that in the next couple of years it'll be really really good fantastic that was Ayush Shukla and over to you team thank you Ayush Shukla joining us on the broadcast. Hopefully we'll see him out there in the red and black for Hong Kong China very soon. Just a bit of a knee niggle, I believe. So resting today, hopefully in for the Tri-Nation starting tomorrow. Yadav just went for four. It's gonna go the scoop. Oh, that was dangerous. There's no future in that one. Archibald Rath, that's the way you got out in a previous series here. Tried to go the scoop and lost the top of his leg stump. Last time we saw him do it. He's tried again anyway. And survive this one. Last time he did that, he had actually scored a hundred. It was in a one-day game against Malaysia, I believe. And then at 101, tried to go the scoop, lost his leg stump. Yadav again. This time decides to go conventional, pushes it onto the leg side. Plenty of space. They were thinking about a second. No run there though. So. Rotate the strike back to Baba Hyatt, who had been playing the supporting role before the drinks break, right up until the 10th over. If you're just joining us, he bashed 22 off that final over. Three sixes and a four. So after that, he's now uh, the leading score runner between these two in their partnership. Partnership moves to 55. Stayed a little low, so just pushes it to mid on. He's Way back, Long On has to come in and do the fielding. Another single. One ball remaining in the 11th. Gives himself some room, gets onto it, clears the rope for a maximum. Anshaman Ruth hits a six. That's his second maximum. Had a player out there on the ropes, but nowhere near where that ball was sailing. Didn't matter, it cleared the rope nicely. He knew that off the bat. A maximum and a good over again for Hong Kong China. They moved to 96 for two after 11. The 
These two taking turns at who has the higher score. Run through that six moves back in front on 33. Rashid Khan coming into the attack from the Argyle Street end. First time we're seeing him today for Nepal. Right arm medium fast. Looks like he's going over the wicket to the right hand of Bubba Hyatt. They've got protection at long on. Deep mid wicket. Deep backward square leg. And they've also got a long off hiding behind the sight screen from our commentary position. As we saw in the 10th over, it didn't really matter. They're bringing that long off in actually. They decided it might be better to have a catching position. Right on the circle. Deep, deep point as well. As Khan comes in. Short. Smashed. Bang. Gone. Smashes in to the Tinkwong Road Recreation Ground. Officers. Leaves a dent. Bounces back in. Massive. That's gone 10, 15 metres up over the rope. Too short from Rasid Khan. Baba onto it in a flash and he moves back in front in this race between these two. 35 off 16 going at 219 strike rate. Remember he started in singles. There's a big appeal. Oh, and there could be a run out as well. That was chaos. Watch on the replay. A bit high. Did hit back pad, but then the run out. Anch decided there was a run. Oh, Bubba was waiting to see what his fate was on the LBW decision. Almost got run out. So a little chat between Anch and Rath and Bubba Hyatt. That was a good delivery from Rashid Khan. Gets that one just a little bit fuller and can wrap the pads. He might get that LBW decision from umpire Nia's alley at the Argyle Street end as Khan comes in again. It is fuller this time. Baba just gets an inside edge onto his pads this time. And another dot started with a massive. And now racking up some dots. Good comeback bowling. Of course, that six brought up the 100 for Hong Kong, China. Like to, like to see milestones brought up in spectacular style and Bubba Hyatt did it in style three balls remaining in the 12th tries to swat it I think he almost tried to go on the offside there but ended up going on out to deep mid wicket for a single rotate the strike back to Ancherman Ruth it's the partnership to 69. Can't. Tarath gave himself some room. I think it's one bounce over the rope for four. It is. It was in the air, but he picked the gap beautifully. Another boundary to Antrim and Rath in Hong Kong, China. See, as soon as it had left the hand, it's going to be a bit short. Didn't get up. It didn't bounce as high as perhaps Antrim and Rath was hoping. But the placement was everything. Two fielders out there, deep mid-wicket, deep square leg, and he picked the gap right between the two of them. And now it's forced a change. Rashid Khan going around the wicket. That one's on the leg side as well. Tried to sweep it fine up. It hits it straight to that deep square leg for a single. Handy over in the end. 12 runs coming from it for Hong Kong, China. They're 108 for two after 12.
Hunter and Roth, 38 off 29. It's practice. GC coming into the attack from the softball ground end this time. Ease down to long on for a single. Wickets in hand for Hong Kong, China. They might look to push over 200 if they can. Really put some pressure on. Weather holds. Hopefully we don't have to see any DLS projections. It's that kind of day here in Hong Kong. Lots of showers earlier today. Let's practice in again. Big call of run, run, run from Antrim and Rath, but in the end, it was a bit quick out there to mid wicket. So just the single. Crowd continues to build on a coolish Saturday afternoon here in Hong Kong. 2.30 p.m. Feels like 6.30 p.m. The weather. Oh, he tried to go huge on that one. I think it stayed a little low on Rath. Skidded on, perhaps. Lucky to get bat on ball in the end. Another dot. He was tidy in his second over. Pratish and into his third now. Just the two singles with three balls remaining. Looking tidy again. Over the wicket to Anch. Gave himself some room. Chopped up in the air. This could be the third wicket to fall. It is. Patish gets the wicket. The crowd goes mad. And Antrim and Rath has to go on 39. Hong Kong, China, 110 for three. Tried to go big again. Gave himself some room, but chopped it up in the air. Almost like his back foot slipped a little bit as well. Skied it up in the air. Easiest of catches. And the crowd were very happy with that one. Rath has to go and come into the crease. It's the wicketkeeper, Jamie Atkinson, back in the side for this tour. Was unavailable to go to Qatar, but takes his place coming in. Number five for Hong Kong, China. In a good place. 7.2 overs remaining. 110 on the board. Atkinson can always go big, is always dangerous. Was a player of the match in one of the games against Japan in the East Asia Cup recently here at Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground. There's plenty of batting to come too, big hitting. Got the likes of Yasin Murtaza, Nazrullah Rana. Saw him practicing in the nets a few days ago. Trying to become a Full all-rounder, bowls fast and can hit big. Might see him later on, but at the moment it's Atkinson on strike. Gets through everything. It's actually clipped the keeper up on the chest. It's got through very quickly with the left arm. Just jumped up on everyone. Bandari with the gloves on for Nepal. Doing a good job keeping that close up to the stumps for this speed. Eased through the gully region. Rashid Khan was waiting, so no run there. A very good over for Nepal and Pratish. Two runs from it, plus a wicket after 13. Hong Kong, China, 110 for three. You can see Azaz Khan. I mentioned how... Still to come, Yasin Murtaza and Nazrullah Rana, but also the run machine that is Azaz Khan. He's been in great form in the 2023-24 se season, both internationally and domestically. So it's a powerful batting lineup from Hong Kong, China today. Rashid Khan will continue from the softball ground end, one over, none for 12. It's always a tough ask bowling from the Argyle Street end. They've pushed long off and long on back on the ropes. Bertel down here near our commentary position at long on. They've got a deep mid wicket, deep square leg. Which means there are runs if you can pierce the infield on the offside. This is a deep point. 
There's a forward point down on the ropes. Here is Khan. Comes down, goes bang. That's gone a long, long way. That one might be out on Ting Kwong Road. That is huge. Baba Hyatt. Somebody down on Ting Kwong Road has a souvenir ball because that has left the ground. Three steps down, absolutely smoked it. Keep running whoever's going to get that ball because that might be up in King George the fifth school that went so far. And as we've seen from Hong Kong, China, when a wicket falls, the next batter comes in, just holds their crease, and the next batter steps up. So Bubba, it started just before the drinks break. So that'll be like five singles. And then smashed 22 off one over from this end, and he's doing it again. And trying to figure out where to bowl to Bubba. Because there's not much forward of square or point he hasn't smashed a six from so far. Also got a bit of wind assist as it gusts in again. Still discussions. Captain standing right near Rashid Khan, uh, giving him instruction at mid-off. Ready to reset. Comes down again, but makes it a Yorker ball. So the captain is in the play there at mid-off. Keeps it to a single. Atkinson back on strike. We see Jamie try to go big as well, or is he going to try to pass the strike back to his Kowloon Cricket Club teammate, Bubba Hyatt? We talked about how the top order for Hong Kong China plays a lot of domestic cricket together. The middle order, Bubba Hyatt, Jamie Atkinson, Azaz Khan, all playing their trade at Kowloon Cricket Club here in Hong Kong. Played plenty of cricket together. Domestically, Atkinson opens with his batting lineup for Hong Kong China. Number five it is. Everyone gets shuffled down Bubba. Sometimes bats at number three for Kowloon. He's at four. Azar's usually at four. He's at six. Wrapped on the pads. And yes, the nod goes up. The finger's gone up. Jamie Atkinson's been given out. LBW for a duck in the fourth wicket falls for Hong Kong China. They're 117 for four. Watch on the replay. The angle felt like it might be strained down leg, but umpire Niaz Ali right in the position to see it. Shuffled across. I don't think that helped Atkinson. Finger goes up. Four wicket falls. Action pack, 14th over. 6 1 wicket. As he said, there's one Kowloon Cricket Club batter heads back to the sheds. Another one comes out. The all rounder, the master, Zaz Khan, having a chat to his teammate, Bubba Hyatt. Six wickets in hand. Six and a half overs remaining. I think to start with, at least for Azaz, the plan might be just get bat on ball, rotate the strike back to Bubba. He's been out there for 22 deliveries. Bubba Hyatt going at a strike rate of 200. Another wicket here for Nepal. I feel like maybe they can restrict Hong Kong China to that par score of 160. But the batting doesn't end. Bat down to number 10, Hong Kong, China. Can't. With the wicket, full. Just eased. Eased down to a whitish long on for a single. Gets off the mark, rotates the strike as does Khan. Easy as you like. That was a good delivery from Khan. Nice Yorker length. Seen quite regularly of late, Zaz Khan seeing them like beach balls. Just eases it into a vacant area as everybody's patrolling the ropes. So we'll see what happens with these final two deliveries. Rashid Khan's second over. At the moment, it's evenly poised. Eight runs from it, plus a wicket. You can see the VIP tent. All the VIPs down there enjoying a late afternoon. Lunch. 
chairperson of Cricket Hong Kong there. Virgie Shroff talking to Anouk Gidwani on the board, the director of Cricket Hong Kong. I'll be enjoying all the action. And there's a chat there. Umpire Nia Zali says it's time to bowl. We'll be bowling to Bubba Hyatt on 44. And gets the dot ball. No. Pushes it too wide. Have to re bowl. It has been tidy bowling from Nepal. That's just the fourth extra, four wides in total as they try to stay outside of Bubba Hyatt's arc. Time's just a little wide as we get towards the death overs. We'll be seeing more of that, that Yorker length outside off. This one re by Rashid Khan. Comes down, goes bang. That's the way to bring up your 50. Bubba Hyatt puts it out of the ground with a maximum. He moves to 50 off 23 deliveries. Big cheers as the Hong Kong China dugout finds out that's his 50. Another one smoked out of the ground. Bubba Hyatt shifts across. Inside out. Gets it over the top of long off to bring up his 50 off just 23 deliveries. One, four, six, sixes. His 50 runs, 36 of them, have gone over the rope for a maximum. One ball remaining in the 14th. What does Khan do this time? And balls are wide, tries again to keep it outside of the arc. The big hitting Bubba Hyatt. That's another extra on the board. There's the VIP tent again. Decided to sit down, plenty of puffer jackets. Wise, one of the Cricket Hong Kong China VIPs. More support staff from Cricket Hong Kong in the blue. Cricket Hong Kong's Ravi Nagdev there. Enjoying some late afternoon lunch. One ball remaining in the 14th. Bubba will retain the strike. Takes a single to end a very good one in the end for Hong Kong China. Even though they lost the wicket of Jamie Atkinson after 14. Hong Kong, China, 127 for four. Bubba's asking for a drink. Umpire Niaz Ali says, uh, hang on, no. So now the gloves come out. He's gonna switch to the cap. Doesn't need new gloves. Coming back into commentary to join me, Jay Dancing Honey. That's, uh, we're in a good spot here, both Nepal getting the wickets down and the runs on the board for Hong Kong China evenly poised yeah no doubt that wicket of course of Jamie Atkinson it was big but I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you I don't think it's evenly poised I think it's the home side who just about have their noses in front it's because of that man on screen he took just 23 balls to bring up his half century and of course last October against the UAE he smashed 60 off 20 balls. So he's been in murderous form in international cricket, Barbara Hayat. Very close to the peak of his powers. But a left arm spin now. Here's Sagar. Well, he was. And then he decided to go over and have a chat to the captain. So reset. How's he going to bowl? He's got more protection from that longer softball ground end boundary. Bubba. Bringing up his 50 in style. Now on strike. Backs away, gives himself some room. Just the single. Yeah, I think you're going to have better luck bowling to Barbara Hayat from the softball court end. Loves those short straight boundaries. Look at that. The crowd just keeps picking up. I see a Nepal jersey in there as well. That man is so passionate that he's ditched his down jacket to show everyone I'm here to support my team. Zaz Khan whips it off the toes. Just rotate the strike again, get his single. He's two off two now. Yeah, it's not the kind of weather where you go bare chested wearing a bomber jacket. You only do that if you've got serious passion for this Nepal team. Look at that. 
down jackets, sweatpants, a couple of face masks on. The camera panned a little further. There's a couple of blokes standing around in shorts, which I think is suboptimal. Uh, <laughs> Saga to continue. Bubba back on strike. Gives him a full toss. Gets away with that one. Just pushed it down to long on for a single. It can happen sometimes, the full toss. Just takes you by surprise as a batter. And the irony of the situation, Barbar Hayat has been hammering everything. Except for that full toss. Ah, got some youngsters here as well. Full, down leg, wide. Yeah, so good to see. We've got a big Nepalese diaspora here in Hong Kong, China. A lot of them, of course, came over during the war fighting for the British. They stayed in Hong Kong. Faster. Stayed a little low on Azaz, but chopped down on it. Gets through for the single. I think Nepal fans as well. I don't think recently you've seen the new and improved Azaz Khan. He's a proper top-order player now, as Azaz. He's not just that man who comes in for a useful cameo at 8, 9, and 10. He's a serious, serious batter, Azaz. Around the wicket. To Baba. Tries to keep it wide. Does keep it wide. Good delivery in the end. Dot ball. Yeah, good stuff, Sagar Dakal. Speaking of Mohammed Gazanfar, the Hong Kong China leg spinner earlier, and he talked up Sagar. Gaz, of course, has played with so many of these Nepal lads at the under 19 and age group levels. Gives that one a bit more air, a bit fuller. Still just singles off this over. And that is a single to finish off the 15th. Hong Kong China 133 for four. Five overs remain. Where can Hong Kong China get to from here? Zipped up my jacket. It's getting chillier and chillier here at TKRG. And Hong Kong, China. They're going at just a shade under nine runs and over. After they lost the toss and they were put into bat. If you gave them this scoreline at this stage, they would have taken it. They're in a position to go 185, 190, maybe threatening 200. Barber Hayat, the dangerous Barber, on strike. Is he going to go big again? Drill down the ground. Oh, great stop. Mid off. I think that's Rohit over there. Fantastic. Saved at least three runs. You just saw a second ago, Babar Hayat's father off screen now. But more support there for Hong Kong, China. I think it's about 50-50 at this stage. Half of all supporters, they're here for the home side. The other half, they're here for the visitors. There's a reason why it's called the Friendship Cup. These two teams know each other so well. Oh, it's just a bit too short there. Vivek already with a big wicket of Jamie. It's a very promising all-rounder. Vivek. Beg your pardon, Rashid. Rashid Khan. Very promising all-rounder, Rashid Khan. Yeah, a bit of a commentator's curse there. That one going down the leg side. Yeah, he's got that hood on. Don't blame him. Don't blame him. Some people in Hong Kong, they wear face masks just to stay warm. It's a good tactic. Getting a thumbs up there. Some of these Nepal supporters. Nepal, Nepal. Those are the chants. They're happy. They know they're on TV. 
bang, he goes high, he goes long. Bertel once again a spectator. And again. Oh, I think that's hit a car. I think that's hit a car. Oh, there you go. That's what happens when you park close to the Tin Kong Recreation Ground. That's what happens when you bowl in the slot. Easy pickings for Ezaz Khan. Goes through with that shot and picks up his first maximum. Things looking very dangerous now. Nine runs have come off this over already. Just the two legal deliveries have been bowled. Yeah, a bit concerned now. Some of these Nepal fans, they're tuning into the live scores. Tuning into the live stream. It's guided. Backward point. Can't prevent the single. That's been the story in the last 15 or 20 minutes. You get the feeling there runs off nearly every single delivery. That man, he's very brave. You need more than just a hoodie in this weather. You gotta love that about Nepal fans. They're not just partisan fans, they just love seeing good cricket. A lot of them are really enjoying this Babar Hayat innings as well. Oh, there you go, I think that might be Akbar Khan there. The USRC's Akbar Khan. Six off the over already. Is that going to be a boundary? Oh, good effort in the deep. I think that's Gulsan Zah. But he looks to the skies. Couldn't prevent the boundary. That's a six and a four already in this over. 14 off it. Still two balls left. Let's see what he was trying to do. He was trying to go block hole. Yeah, it wasn't full enough. It was a bit too wide. Allowed him to free his arms. Picks up yet another boundary here at his Barber Hayat. Look at that, 59 off 30. Again goes big, that's in the air, it's a chance. Oh, puts in the dive, just goes on the half volley though. It's a good effort to prevent the boundary. Yeah, they're li they like that, they like that. The Nepal fans, they love that effort. They didn't love that result though. I think they're so happy as well after seven long years. Their team, their heroes are in Hong Kong, China. Still four overs left after this. Can they get up to 200? I think he might have found the gap there, Azaz Khan. Yeah, he's hit it better than I thought behind square. 150 up now for Hong Kong China. Ezaz moves on to 14. A mammoth 19 off that over. See on this replay as well. Rasid Khan. Too straight, too easy. Ezaz Khan. He's been in brilliant form, hasn't he? Both domestically and internationally. Some of the Hong Kong under 19s. Fresh off that tour to Thailand. Was it Thailand? Yeah, absolutely. Ah, it's getting windier. One of our tents is blown away here at TKRG. Yeah, those tents were weighted down as well by sandbags. More importantly, it's Barber. Big Barber on strike again. And again, he gets a boundary. This time, sliced away for four. Or is it more than four? Yeah, no, it's gone all the way. There you go, John Prakash. Confirmation coming from the standing umpire. Boundaries continuing to flow here for Hong Kong, China. Look at this. Bang goes Barber. Doesn't even move. Yeah, that's the thing when Barber Hayat is in this sort of mood. You're not going to get your 10,000 steps a day, Barber. Keep hitting it that far. I think it's a bit of a nervous smile there. From that man, that spectator. Might have been a Nepalese fan there. He's conflicted. He's loving this from Barber. He just wishes it wasn't against his team. Oh, it's a rare dot ball. Good bit of work off his own bowling there from the left arm spinner. Look at 
Look at that winning and score predictor. 198. Slows it up. Back to back dots. And it gives him a bit of a stare as well to Sagar Dakhal. Not sure that's going to change Barber's approach. 66 off 34. Bang! This time doesn't miss out on that full toss. The crowd are looking over their heads. Keep looking. That's gone out of the ground. Arms up again. John Prakash moves into the 70s now. Does Barber? This is how he got there. Sagar Dakal this time doesn't get away. With yet another full toss. I love what Barber did. He worked himself across his crease. He was targeting the leg side, wasn't he? This is a big, big score here from Hong Kong, China. And look at this acceleration as well. They've gone absolutely bonkers in the last seven or eight overs. They were 61 for two after nine. 103 runs have come in the last 46 balls. Bit of an anti-climax there, just a single. But that's the thing, it's usually that middle overs phase that tends to be the most economical in T20 cricket. Hong Kong, China, they flipped the script. Last ball of another expensive over, 13 off it. Can they close it out with the boundary? Ooh, it keeps low. It's done well there. The left arm spinner. Take a look at this replay. How close was that to the inside edge? Yeah, it just skidded off the surface, didn't it? Something to keep in mind if you're Yasim Murtaza or Ehsan Khan. The left arm spinner and Offi, respectively. Nonetheless, 13 off the over, three overs left. It's 165 for four. And you can see brilliant air quality in Hong Kong, but that's not the discussion point here. The discussion point is that 17 degree weather. That's misleading as well. It doesn't feel like 17. It feels like it's 12 or 11 at this stage. Who's going to bowl these last three overs? Looks like we have a change in bowling. Pratish, GC back into the attack. The big question for Nepal, how do you stop Babar Hayat, 73 off 36, a strike rate in excess of 200. He scored one century already in T20Is. Again, too much width. Bit of wicked spin on that, but deep backward point keeps it down to one. He's going pretty well himself. 14 off 7. I don't think you're going to see a situation where he looks to give the strike to Barber. He's going to go big himself. Oh, did well there, the left armor. Ah, oh, spoke too soon. Signaled wide by the umpire. You can see what he was trying to do there. That first delivery as well. He was aiming for that wide Yorker. 50 partnership up as well between these two. Fifty of just twenty-two balls. Imagine that. Just a single there down to deep extra cover. I think that seems to be the plan now for the left armor. He knows that if you bowl straight and in the slot these Hong Kong batters they're not gonna be afraid to go down the ground but if you're Barber you're Azaz I'm sure you're anticipating that wideish delivery as well you have more protection from a Nepal's perspective on those square offside boundaries 
Moves across his stumps, accesses the leg side. And I think that's gone all the way. Yeah, absolutely. Niaz Ali gets his arms up. Just like that, he's into the 80s. The left arm again, trying to angle it across Barber. He's too good, isn't he? Works his way across his stumps. Not for the first time today either. That's the benefit of being the home side, of being aware and just being used to the dimensions of this outfield. Where does he go now? Does he go wide again? He does go wide. Is it too wide? No, it's okay. It's okay. Two balls left in the over. Good result that for Nepal. Good thinking as well from the left armor. That's the thing. I think if you're going to go wide, you've got to go full as well for that full Yorker. Again, you can see him just looking his over his shoulder, looking leg side. Drill down the ground. Bertel does well. Gets out that long barrier. It's just a single. That's the thing if you're Nepal. You don't mind giving away singles at this stage. It's all about protecting that boundary. Ten runs off the first five deliveries here. Can he close it out? With a dot, a single, maybe a wicket. That's wide. Oh, work to do. Oh, he's found the gap there, Azaz Khan. Placed it to perfection. Just like that, 14 off the over. Two overs left, Hong Kong, China. 179 for four. Let's take a look at this replay. Again, going wide. But couldn't find that Yorker length. That's the thing, if you bowl length, you bowl wide. Give Azaz and Barber the opportunity to free their arms. Aaron Bush back in the box. 14 off that over, Aaron. Fantastic. Azaz finding that gap. That was brilliant because there were two fielders waiting, lurking. And he's just picked the gap. We've seen that a few times today in the Hong Kong China batting innings. Picking the gap to perfection. Getting the boundary. Keeping the runs flowing. Two overs remaining. 200 definitely on the cards here with plenty of wickets in hand. That partnership just keeps growing. It's been a murderous 24 minutes. 62, the partnership of just 27 balls. The left arm spinner again. Bang! That's high. Oh, that's very, very long onto the roof of that softball canteen. Barber, big barber, gets another six. Look out, softball players, because that's gone into the softball ground. Baba destroying it. Wasn't too full. Just got to the slot, drilled it, long boundary. We see wickets fall regularly trying to clear that rope. He didn't just clear the rope. He cleared the rope, cleared the fence, and onto the roof of the softball ground canteen. Ten sixes now. For the big, dangerous Babar Hayat. Bang. Should just be one. Oh, nasty bounce at the last minute. It bursts through the hands of that unlucky long off fielder. Oh, that was really nasty. Just glad it didn't hit him in the face there. I've got a feel for Vivek Yadav there. He had it under the control, it was hit straight to him, and then it's just taken a bounce off the ground over his shoulder, like you say, lucky not to get it in the face. Another boundary in the scorebooks for Hong Kong China. Ten off two. Oh, Barbara Hayat kicked off his innings with a bunch of singles just working the ball around, but he's gone absolutely crazy. Ten balls left in the innings. Oh, it looked like an edge on that. Just edge down onto the ground. Maybe. Maybe. The bat just hitting the surface. It's a rare dot ball. That's the thing when Barber's in this sort of mood. 
And there's a dart ball. You don't really expect it. You're caught unawares. It's a good result, though, for Nepal. Still 10 off the over already. More than 10 now. Much more than 10. 11 sixes for Babar Hayat. Moves on to 97. And this over just getting bigger and bigger. 16 off it so far. Two balls left. So much right. This one was a bit full. And he has delivered it. It didn't go onto the roof this time, but definitely cleared the fence at the back there. Smashed it. Gone. Another six in the hooks for Barbara Hyatt. 97 off 44. Yeah, he's barely moved, Barbara Hayat. It's on 97. Eyeing up that century. A uh, bit of an anti climax. He's going to have to re bowl that, the left arm spinner. See what he's trying to do. He doesn't want to bowl in the slot to Barber. If he gets there, it's going to be his second T20i ton. Call through for a single. Ooh, they're thinking about a second. Wisely decide against it. Just one. Moves on to 98 now. One ball left in the 19th. What does Azaz Khan do here? You wouldn't think he's taking a single. Want Bubba on strike for the final over. And we'll see what he does. On strike, Azaz Khan on 19. Yeah, I think he's going to go big. He's going to try and go for that boundary. Azaz. See him just eyeing up the offside. Does go offside. It's only going to be one. He made one a fool of me. Yeah. <laughs> I said he wasn't going to take a single. Want to have Bubba on strike for the final over, but Nazar's can't. Will retain strike. Yeah, one over left. It's 198 for four. He's calling for a helmet now, Barbara Hayat. It's also the end of the spell for Sagar Dakhal. Three overs, none for 38. And yeah, it's a tough day at the office for the left arm spinner. But he's ran into a rampant Babar Hayat. Jay, we, started, we talked about it at the beginning of the innings. Now the problem for Nepal. They have to bowl this final over from the Argyle Street end, the short boundary end. We've seen it punished during this batting innings. And Chan's got the ball in hand. The debutante being given the honours to bowl the death over from the Argyle Street end to Azaz Khan. Yeah, the T20i debutante for Nepal. He's played two ODIs, of course. And one of the stars of Nepal's impressive Under-19 World Cup campaign. Six balls left. Let's it go. Still six balls left. Score creeps up to 199. Six legal deliveries still remaining. Trying that death over bowling. Wide. Yorker outside off. But starts too wide. Yeah, you spoke about taking a single off that last ball of the previous over. Yeah, if you're Nepal, you're not going to mind that too much. Full toss, drilled. Rohit Kumar Powdle. The skipper does well to keep it down to one and 200 up now for Hong Kong. They lost the toss, Hong Kong, China. They were put in to bat. You can see that dugout as well. They'll be quite pleased with this score line. They're getting excited now. You know why they're getting excited? Because it's Barber on strike. Big Barber on 98. He's looking leg side. He's got boundaries all around. He's gone straight. He's gone leg side. He's gone offside. Here he is on 98. What a way to get to a century. Babar Hayat with his second T20I century. An innings of the highest order. He looks towards his father. Gets down on the ground. Salutes the dugout. Thanks the almighty as well. Barbara Hayat, we've seen something absolutely special. It's been in brilliant form. 
one of Hong Kong's finest, a certified legend, stepping up to the plate against Nepal. 104 of 46 balls, 12 maximums, three boundaries. Absolutely fantastic, Aaron Bush. What an innings we've seen from Baba Hyatt. Coming in, number four, bashing it. 104, strike rate over 200. As you say, 12 maximums, including a beautiful one to bring up his century. Look at that crowd. A lot of them, they're here to see Nepal. They've seen something special from Babar. Again, he goes big. And again, he goes all the way. Moves on to 110. 13 maximums. He's got a smile on his face, Niaz Ali. Anytime you don't see Niaz Ali enjoying a big six is when he's bowling. And this one here, he, at a bird's eye view, Chan comes in, Bubba shuffles across, tries to go to that tram line, but Bubba was there waiting. Bang! Over long off, six. Only his third game at the senior international level, Akash Tund. He's realizing very quickly this is very different from under-19 cricket. Babar Hayat would command a place in a lot of full member teams as well. Three balls left. Oh, he's missed that. Yeah, tried to work it away. On the leg side there, did Babar. Bit of an anti-climax there. The delivery in the end, followed Bubba across. It was wider than the tram line, the blue line there, but because Bubba had shuffled across, missed it. Dot ball, valuable with three, two balls remaining in the 20th. Yeah, 14 off the over so far, so still a very good one for Hong Kong, China. Wow. More than 150 runs coming in the last 10 overs. This time he doesn't miss out. Or does he? It's in the air. Oh, that's just held up in the air and been taken. But Babar Hayat, what a fantastic innings. 110 off 49. One ball left in the innings, 212 for five. Aaron, special innings. Brilliant innings for Baba Hayat. Comes to an end, tries to put one more over the rope, over the long off, but just skies it up in the air. Long off coming in off the ropes, takes a nice catch there. The captain, a captain's catch to get rid of the very dangerous Baba Hyatt. And that brings Yasin Mernazar to the crease as Baba gets a big round of applause from the Hong Kong China dugout. Well deserved, brilliant innings from Baba Hyatt. Yeah, big stage as well against a leading associate nation to step up like this and play this sort of a knock. Absolutely incredible. And he's been building up to this as well, hasn't he, in the last few months. We talked about that 15-ball half-century against the UAE at Malpani. Today he's gone one better. He's got three figures. And he's given the home side a clear advantage already in the first half of this game. What a statement from both Barber and Hong Kong China. You got to give credit to Akash Chand. Stormed back. Second wicket for him. Yasin Murdaza gets the pleasure of facing only one delivery. Last ball of the innings. Yasim on strike. Akash Chand with the ball. He's gone straight. Is it going to be another catch? Yes. Ends with back to back wickets there. Big cheer as well from the Nepalese contingent. Good stuff, Akash Chand. Finishes on three for 27 in his three overs. That's a really good return. Probably the pick of the bowlers for Nepal. But the big story, Hong Kong, China, has smashed 212 for six in 20 overs. That's the last wicket. That wicket is purely cosmetic. Massive, massive last 10 or 11 overs for Hong Kong, China. Both Azaz Khan... And the rest of that Hong Kong dugout can be very, very proud of themselves. Huge, huge statement here from the home side on a cold morning here at TKRG. Let's take a look at that wagon wheel. Oh, Barbara Hayat, look at that. Boundaries, runs all across the wicket, all around that outfield. He loved going straight. 
Loved going over long off and long on. Went leg side as well. Clearing a deep mid wicket on multiple occasions. Went behind the wicket for that scoop that went over the rope. Thrashed one over deep cover. Another one over deep extra cover. And for good measure, went over deep point as well. 13 sixes for Babar Hayat. I gotta say, I love what I've seen so far in this first innings. But Nepal, they're not out of it. There's always a chance they can fire back in that second innings. Speaking of which, don't go too far. We will be with you in a second for some halfway point analysis. Aaron Bush and I will be talking to you about how this first innings has gone down. Friendship series one of T20I between Nepal and Hong Kong China. What a wrap that was. 2-12, 4-6 and well. What do you think, Aaron? Was that enough? Can Hong Kong defend this? I think that's a great score for Hong Kong China. We were talking 160 par out there at the toss. 180 would be a bonus. 2-12. That's huge on this ground. It's a centre wicket, so the, the longer of the boundaries, but Bubba Hyatt, he did not care. Getting his second century in T20Is, massive energy. Basically half the run scored were off the bat of Bubba Hyatt. That's, that was amazing, fantastic. And what do you think, Jay Dancing Kani? How was that first half? 
What do I think? I mean, what more is there to say? Babar Hayat, like you said, with his second T20I century, hitting guess how many? 13 maximums in that knock. He was brilliant all around the ground. He was brilliant straight down the ground, of course, but also accessing the leg side and going over the covers, going over deep backward point as well. So I was thoroughly entertained. And big Babar Hayat, that's a big reason why Nepal find themselves in this position having to chase 213. Well, that's right. We were thoroughly entertained. And what do you think of the Nepal batters? Who are the key players up now? Who are you counting on? It's got to be Kushal Bertel, of course, and the skipper as well, Rohit Poundel. I think they definitely hold the key for Nepal, especially in the absence of someone like Dipendra Singh Iri, their top run scorer in T20I cricket. He hasn't made the trip to Hong Kong. So those two batters I just spoke of, they're going to be the big keys here for Nepal if they stand a chance of chasing down what is, well, a very imposing total here for Hong Kong, China. It is. That's right. Aaron, what are your thoughts? Well, you're right. Uh, the young captain for Nepal, Rohit, he's averaging over 30. He has to average more than that today if they want to chase down this total. But it'll be the bowling from Hong Kong, China. We're looking forward to seeing a good pace attack. They're just behind us warming up. You've got the likes of Atik Iqbal, Nasrullah Rana, DJ Rao in the side. You can do it with the speed, but then also the two masters, Yasin Murtaza, Isan Khan. They're going to be bowling probably from the softball ground end and always taking wickets. Can they get enough wickets? I think they're going to need to bowl Nepal out. They could possibly restrict them under the 212, but they'll be looking to bowl them out as the umpires are heading back out in the middle, not far away from getting this run chase underway. We'll head back to the commentary position. Stick around for all the action of the second innings here live from Tingkwong Road Recreation Ground. No rest for the wicked. A short changeover. We're already back here at TKRG. I'm not going to complain, though. The action just keeps rolling here at the home of cricket in Hong Kong, China. It's that man you were speaking of as well. DJ Rao, fantastic in Qatar. Won a player of the match award as well in one of the games. Did the promising left armor. And another man we spoke of, Kushal Bertel, coming out to bat with Binod Bandari. It's a big opportunity as well for Binod Bandari back in this Nepal setup, the wicketkeeper batter. But it's Bertel. He's the big player here for Nepal. If he gets off to a nice strong start in this power play, it's going to give Nepal a chance of just equaling the odds here. Make no mistake, Aaron, but the runs on the board, especially 212 runs on the board, it's the home side with the advantage right now. Now they'll go into this bowling attack. Innings really G'd up with that big score on the board. Sometimes the batting can falter a few times for Hong Kong, China, but not today. Now they've got to do it with the ball. DJ Rao, he's got the big hair back again. Got the left arm quick, and again, he's starting from the Argyle Street end. One down here at Long On, Martin could see her in a catching position. Starts with a wide after the big talk up, the left arm strain. 
Hey, right after a big talk up, just talking about DJ Rao, how he's coming into this tournament with some degree of form. But when he gets it right, he's so, so hard to contend with. Love that hair as well, DJ Rao. I definitely don't have the ability to grow hair like that. This one all oh, jumped up. They'll get first runs, but that was a good, quick delivery from DJ. And that's what's impressed me about him compared to a few seasons ago. I think he's got improved control, but he's also, I feel, put on a yard of pace as DJ Rao. Well, Not the he... first left armor we've seen today either. We saw Pratish as well yep. cause a few issues for the Hong Kong China batters. Left arm is good. We'll see Yasim Murtaza with the left arm later on. DJ in again. And Dari on strike. He'll just ease it onto the leg side for a single. Keep the runs ticking over. Tick Iqbal doing the fielding. Yeah, both batters now. Both Bertel and Bandari off the mark. Yeah, like I said, big opportunity this for Binod Bandari, especially in the absence of Asif Sheikh. And usually it's Asif Sheikh and Kushal Bertel who form that dangerous combination up top for Nepal. Over the wicket, like straying down leg again, just trying to push it a little too fast there, Dananjay Rao. Swing ho raha hai. That's what Nizakat Khan is saying. Translation, it's swinging. <laughs> now, you expect that as well on a windy day. Resets. And again, Bertel this time pushes it way outside off. Very close to being off the pitch. It went that far out. Called wide. Yeah, a bit loose here. Third wide delivery of the over here from DJ Rao. The one time he has gotten it right. Wrapped Kushal Bertel on the gloves. One thing we did see from the Nepal bowling innings it was tidy, 11 extras only. It's three in this first over from Hong Kong, China. That one's a better delivery, but they will get runs. Putting pressure on the field, keep the runs ticking over. Three for another single. Yeah, I don't know if you picked that up just now. My teeth are clattering. It is getting colder and colder. I don't believe what the forecasters are saying. I don't think it... It doesn't feel like 16 degrees, I'll tell you that much. Dananje into Bandari. Oh, big appeal for LBW. Immediately shook away from umpire Niaz. Another good delivery. Getting his line in the length right. I suspect this is just going down leg side there from DJ Rao. Like I said, yeah, better. Much better that from DJ Rao. I'd say maybe just bowl a little bit straighter than that as well. Try and get it into that corridor of uncertainty. See what he's trying to do. Find that swing back into the right-hander. Maybe it's just worth angling one away. That one swatted hard. Might be the infield. Skidding. Nice ruler runner. Keeps it to a dot. That delivery was interesting. It looked like he wasn't quite getting through his run-up there, DJ Rao. So hasn't quite found his radar and hasn't quite found his rhythm either. Well, it's quite a young side for Nepal. Rather old side. I'll go through that after this delivery. It's swatted in the air, but picks the gap beautifully. Gets the first boundary on the board for Nepal. Yeah, Bandari, one of the older members of this Nepalese lineup, picks up his first boundary and Nepal's first boundary. After the first over, it's 10 for no loss. Let's take a look at this. Didn't do too much wrong here to DJ Rao. A few steps down the track and bang through the offside. They need more of this. They need a lot more of this to Nepal. Good start, though, for the visitors. 10 for no loss. And Jay, we're talking just I was about to before they got crunched for four how Hong Kong China doesn't have much youth nowhere near as much as Nepal there's only three players for Hong Kong China 
under the age of 30. DJ's one of them, Nasrula Runner, and who's the other one? Somebody, uh, Ancham and Rath. So just three players, whereas you've got the likes of the captain for Nepal, just in his 20s, 21 and a bit. And there's 19 year olds, 18 year olds. So a lot of youth on display from the softball ground end. Atik Iqbal with ball in hand. In he comes. That's crunched hard. Back with a point. Nelson Murders are there though. Safe hands. Keeps it to a dot. Teak. Oh, did he get an edge? I heard an edge. The umpire heard an edge, and that's the first wicket to fall for Nepal. They're 10 for one. A Teak Iqbal getting the breakthrough with his second delivery. It's the big wicket of Bert's Alpha 2. Watch the replay. Inside edge. Jamie Atkinson, easy catch. And the two Kowloon Cricket Club players combine to break through, get the first wicket for Hong Kong, China. Nepal 10 for 1. Gentlemen, a Tee Kickball. This is just his fifth T20I. Gets a wicket. That's what he does. He bowls on a length over and over again. Call it the handkerchief from Atif, Atik Iqbal. Eventually, usually it takes a while to lure a false stroke, but it only took two balls this time. And that brings the captain to the crease for Nepal. Oh, it pulled with some work to do. It's team 10 for one. And has him poking at that one as well. In for another dot. Good shape away off the scene. Hits the outside edge. This one a little shorter. Just guided down to Martin could see her at deep third. Gets off the mark, rotates the strike. Two balls remaining in the second. Comes down the wicket, charges, up in the air. It's going to clear the infield. Does it clear everything? Yes, it does. The first maximum in the books for Nepal. Mandari attacking Atik Iqbal, getting the fall of the ball, negating any swing. Going to the longer boundary, came all the way down. He's hit that beautifully. Just outside off. Both fielders for Hong Kong, China. You can see Jamie Atkinson putting the helmet on. He's decided no more dancing down the pitch for you, Bandari. I'm going to keep up to the stumps. One ball remaining in the second. Gets down, tries to sweep. Not sure he got any bat and it could be a leg bye. Wait for the signal from umpire John Prakash. Yes, a little bit of glove. No, nope, buys. Missed everything. Wow, Angle, I thought it came off some pad, but a buy in the books to end the second over. Nepal, 18 for one, going at a run rate of nine. The run rate required just more than that, 10.8. Successful over for Atik Iqbal and Hong Kong, China. Dananjay Rao will continue from the Argyle Street end. A little expensive in this first over, going for 10 runs, but... A bunch of those were extras as he pushed it down leg side. 
Pushed one very wide side off as well. Short this time, swept away. That's going to be four behind square, racing down over the rope into the covers. But short there from Dananje. Onto it quickly. Pandaris all of a sudden moved to 15. What's a player lurking? I think it was a two kick bow behind square. It was not that fine, so as you can see, as he chases it down, it's long gone over the ropes for another boundary. More gusts of breeze, making it tough work out there for everyone. Runs on the leg side. I'm going to be happy just behind square with a single. Bring the captain back on strike. As we said in the innings break, Averaging 30.7 with the bat, second best average for the team here in Hong Kong from Nepal. We'll need a captain's knock today to hold off the Friendship Series Cup. Quick single, Atkinson doing the work. Shy but safely home. Six off the first three. Runs continuing to flow for Nepal. Captain Nazakat Khan there. Come on, fellas. Come on, fellas. These Hong Kong China teammates. It's in the air. Oh, it's just wide. Asan Khan there diving. Gets that right hand out. All strapped up. Cut off a certain four if you didn't get that big mitt down there. Hassan can't. We'll see him with the ball. Some point very soon, I'd suggest. Maybe the fifth over. The sixth over, I should say. From the softball ground end, a dot ball. Haven't seen too many of those. Dananje so far, so valuable. Seven runs from the third with one ball remaining. The kids still in, having fun out there, waiting for the boundaries to come their way so they can throw it back to their favorite Hong Kong China player. Eased on the offside, a little bit of indecision. Backing up here and good backing up from Mazaz Khan. Keeps it to just a single. Tidier that one from Dananje. Eight off it. Good runs again for Nepal after three there. 26 for one. Empty kick bar will continue from the softball ground end. Wicket taker in his first over, one for seven. Also got hit for a six. And that man's down at the non-striker's end, the six hitter, Bandari. It'll be the captain, Rohit Holdall. Hang on, there's some discussion here. I said we might see Esan Khan into the attack shortly. I didn't expect it to be this shortly. It is the fourth over. Hassan Khan's going to roll the arm over. Atik, just the one over, has a break. And the master, back in the side just recently for the Malaysia Canada series after 13 weeks off with injury. It's a noted wicket taker. It's rare that you see Hassan Khan with ball in hand and not getting a breakthrough. Not only that, he has the ability to tie the batters down. But if the Nepal batters out there, Bandari and Powdell, can get on to him early, get Hassan Khan unsettled, runs could be had inside the power play. He's trying to see. It's got a long on in place down on the softball ground fence. 
and also a deep mid wicket. So just eases it onto the leg side for a single, brings the big hitting Bandari back on strike. 17 off nine. Two fours and a six. And that's 17. Isan Khan, fast, flat, big, thick edge. That's racing down to our commentary position. I'm going to take evasive action as the ball rolls underneath my toes. Big edge there. It'll be a boundary in the books, but Isan Khan won't mind that one. Slightly more of a feather. And Jamie Atkinson went in it for a catch. Didn't know much about that one. Bandari squared him up. Races through our commentary position for four. Valuable runs though. Five off the first two deliveries. Over the wicket. That's been lofted in the air. There is a player lurking, but two square. Oh, tapped it in nicely. Saved two runs there. Nazrullah runner patrolling the boundary out there at deep mid wicket, having to run behind square. Tapped it back in. Saved two runs. Fuller this time. Crunched. Hit hard. Hit straight. Hit for four. What I was saying, if you attack Isan Khan early, you can unsettle him. First boundary was an edge. That there, no edge involved. Crunch straight back through the bowler. Down to the long boundary for four. Almost got the fingertips down Assad. But hit too well in the end. And that one's been lofted. All the way. Watch out. Softball kids walking through down there. That one's gone over the fence for a maximum. Carnage this over. The ball banging on the boundaries. 17 so far. Very handy over. Bantari moves to 33 off 13. And now a discussion. Bringing in the other master. Of spin, Yasim Murtaza to have a chat. That ball's departed, not getting it back. So third umpire, Shelton De Cruz, brings out a new pill. Umpire John Prakash is deciding which one should be in use. It's now been decided. Just what Nepal needed. Chasing down a huge total of 212, 213 for victory. Moving towards the 50 mark, well inside the power play. Just a one ball remaining in the fourth. Oh, and that's a good delivery, good comeback delivery from SR Khan, getting it to shoot through, stay a bit lower, a bit faster, gets the dot ball. Still 17 runs coming from the fourth. Nepal, 43 for one. Run rate and run rate required almost equal now. You see on the screen there, separated by 0.12 of a run. Dan Jay Rao will continue from the Argyle Street end though. Two overs, none for 18. 10 off his first, eight off his second. And Captain Zaka Khan having a chat to his young bowler. Anjay Rao, about a month away from his 22nd birthday. Oh, it was a good length, just pushing it down. Leg, though, he's looking for that LBW. Let's go through the gate. Jamie Atkinson, again, having to keep up to the stumps, to these quicks. Not an easy task. Dananje, and that's just nicely dabbled behind point. Short third 
Hassan Khan picks it up, rotate the strike. And brings the big hitting Bandari back on strike. Strike rate of 235.7. Very handy inside the power play, opening the batting today. And that one's been pushed down leg again. DJ struggling. Left arm to right hand. Six extras, five wides, one by, all five wides coming from Denanjo. And that one's just popped around the corner. One bounce to Kigpal. Does the fielding get through for a single? Bit quicker on to Bandari there. Was lucky not to pop it up and hold it out to that fielder, Ati Kigpal, lurking at a shortish fine leg inside the circle. Wide one, wide one to start the fifth. That's been lofted in the air, nobody out there. You can put that in the books as a boundary and that brings up the 50 for Nepal in style. Very nice. The captain getting in on the boundaries now. 50 runs up for Nepal inside the fifth over. 4.3 overs to be precise. He said we needed a captain's knock today. This was beautiful, went on it. Knew the field was all inside the circle on the offside. It's the boundary. This time straying onto the pads. More work to do for Hong Kong China. Won't get to the boundary. But they will get back for a well run two. The runs continue to tick over. The youngster DJ getting some more advice from his captain. Still got two balls remaining in this over. 10 runs off it so far. Done that short, popped up. Atkinson didn't glove it, but no damage done. In the books as a dot. Effort ball from Denanje Rao. They will get the single off it. Another good over from Nepal, bringing up the 50. After five, they are 54 for one. And taking you through to the drinks break it will be Jay Dunting Honey. Fifty-four for one after five. Good start here from Nepal. A much needed start as well, given the fact that they're chasing such a stiff target. Got one more over left in this power play. Hong Kong, China, just the one wicket so far. Atik, can he get a second? It's worked away down to long on for just one. Keeps getting chillier and chillier here at TKRG. You can hear it in my voice as well. The cold has had a bit of an effect on me. Oh, I think that's hit him in the helmet there. Benod Bandari. Hope he's okay. They yeah, were calling for a concussion test right now. As per the protocols. So he was just trying to go over the keeper there. Yeah, it's tough. It can happen sometimes. It's one of the risks with that attempted shot 
from Nepal's perspective. They'll be hoping he can kick on, he can continue. Yes, as per the protocols, we have to have a concussion test. Yeah, he gets a pat on the back. He's happy with that. The physio. So good news, both for Nepal fans and for neutral spectators as well. It's been a really good start, this, from Binod Bandari. 34 off 16. Bit of a change in role for him today as well. Coming up at the top of the order, Bandari. Hoping to establish himself as more of a regular player in this Nepal setup. So big opportunity for him. That's in the air. It could be taken. Yasim, no, it goes over him. He's going to prevent the boundary here, but he can't prevent that second run. So fortuitous two runs here for Nepal. Every single run counts. They're keeping up with that required rate. The winning and score predictor, Wasp, at the start of the inning, sat on 11. It's now almost doubled to 22. Pulled away, pulled all the way for six. That's been put down in the crowd, but it doesn't matter. Another maximum here for Binod Bhandari. Moves into the 40s now, and the 50 partnership up as well between Bandari and Rohit Kumar Powdell. Bang, there you go. Wasn't even that short. It was a bit top edgy as well from the right hander. But it goes all the way. Nepal, they've come to play. Making a real, real good impression in the second innings with the bat. Every chance of them chasing this down. It's been a good batting wicket so far here. Credit goes, of course, to Jashimuddin, the curator and the ground staff, for preparing a fantastic T20I wicket. Oh, it's come in to the right-hander, just jagging back in off the seam. It's a good way to close out the power play. But Nepal, they're going strong. 64 for one. After six. The helicopter signal from Niaz Ali signaling the end of the first power play. They can spread out the field now, Hong Kong, China. You can see Nazakat Khan just having a conversation here with Nasrullah Rana. Rana in for his first over, coming in at a crucial juncture. And he plays this role for Hong Kong China as well. He's the middle overs enforcer for Hong Kong China. So often in the last 6 to 12 months, we've seen Nasrullah Rana pick up regular wickets in the middle overs. He has a lot of experience as well, bowling from the short straight boundary. Wonder if we're going to see short deliveries. There's a fine leg in the circle with deep square leg back on the ropes. A deep mid wicket as well on the boundary, long on in the form of Martin Kutsia. He's back on the ropes. Mid off in the circle, Nazakat Khan marshalling his troops. Keeping his fingers crossed for that second wicket. See Bandari as well. Looking leg side. Ooh, playing a miss there. Yeah, wild swing, just playing inside the line of that. Yeah. Oh, that was so close to the stumps, wasn't it? Just a bit over that off stump. He's got some serious gas as well, doesn't he, Nasrullah Rana? He's a very, very good cricketer. Can give the ball a thump down the order as well. What I like about Rana is he's worked so much on his control in the last year or so. He's still got the pace. 
again beating the bat. See Bandari and Powell now just coming down for a mid-pitch conference here. You know, I see this time and time again for Hong Kong, China. The opposition, they get off to a quick start in the power play. But then China, in that post-power play period, they hit back with wickets, they drag the opposition back. Slashed straight to the man at cover. Easy catch there. I think that's Anshi Rath over there. Well, that's the second wicket down. In fact, that's Barber. That's Big Barber. It's a huge wicket as well. Of Benod Bandari gone for 42. This is why he's walking back to the dugout. Yeah, didn't quite get it. First wicket for Nasrul Arana right on cue. Just as we were talking him up. Gets that big breakthrough. Bandari gone for 42. Nepal 64 for 2 after 6.3. Walking in at 4 now. Arif Sheikh. He's got a lot of work to do, Arif Sheikh. And another one of those batters who wants to establish himself as a more regular member of this Nepal unit. He's got big shoes to fill, though. It's usually the Bendra Singh Airi who tends to bat at that 4 and 5 position. No dippy on this tour of Hong Kong. Gives other people an opportunity. Gives RF Sheikh an opportunity to really make an impression. To show the team management, to show Monty Desai, this is what I can do. Can he get a second? Nasr Larana. Nice and quick. That's on the pants though. Worked away for a single. Gets off the mark. Desire of Sheikh. That wicket coming at such a crucial juncture. You can see what that's done as well to that winning in score predictor. Just before that wicket. Wasp was sitting at around 20%. It's now dipped to 12%, which is where it was at the start of the innings. Powdell on a runner ball 13. Down the track he goes. Can't find the gap. Well done, Nizaka. It's only a single. You can see him just practicing that shot as well, Powdell. I think he meant to go a lot straighter than that. Just a little bit towards mid-off. That's why he couldn't find the gap. I think that's wrapped him on the pads there. Once again, you'll see that these Nepal batters just hurried for pace a bit. Leg by to close out the seventh over. A successful one for Hong Kong, China. The big wicket of Bandari. After seven, it's 67 for two. And if you're just joining us, the news from the middle is Hong Kong, China were put into bat. They hammered 212 for six. And in response, Nepal, they're 67 for two. Saw a scintillating century from Barbara Hayat that's stolen the headlines today. His second T20I century, his fastest T20I century as well. 110 of just 49 deliveries. Imagine that. I can see members of our production crew just moving around, trying to keep warm there. Getting in some steps as well. Muskan Samtani. Saw her in conversation with Ayush earlier. Back live. That's worked away for just one.
change in bowling as well. You see Yasim Murtaza into the attack for the first time today. Again worked away. They're thinking about a second. He's quick, isn't he? Yeah, he's very quick. They get back for it. They get back quite easily. Rohit Kumar Powdell, the skipper leading from the front. He's a good man to have out at this stage as well. Powdell, he's got the power game. He can clear the ropes. Good thing about Rohit Kumar Powdell. He can just minimize those dot balls as well. He just keeps that scoreboard ticking. It's down leg side. Easy. Bonus run here for Nepal. See what that wicket has done as well. And what that tight over has done. The required rate has now ballooned to 11.2. Did well. Then Powder just couldn't find the gap. Kept a bit low from the left arm spinner. Four runs off the over so far. Three balls left. Can he pick up a boundary? Tries to go leg side. He's mishit that. DJ Rao in like a flash. Only a single. I think you can pick up some of these Hong Kong fielders on that effects mic. Does it beat the man? No, it doesn't. Well done, Martin Kutsia. Saved at least one run, if not three there. A short third man. I've got to say, I'm quite impressed with the standard of ground fielding so far today. Both Nepal and Hong Kong, their fielders, they've thrown themselves around. They've played so much cricket against each other, Nepal and Hong Kong. That's why we call it the Friendship Cup. Down the track! All the way for six! Admires that, doesn't bother running, does the Nepal skipper. Fantastic way to close out the eighth over, 12 runs off it. It's 79 for two. He got his dancing shoes on, didn't he? Rohit Poundel. Bang down the track. Yeah, you love to see that on the replay, don't you? Twelve off the over. What a way to close things out as well with half a dozen off the last ball. And we're at that stage as well with the required rate exceeding eleven. They need, on average, a boundary every over to Nepal. But in this modern age of T20 hitting, it's not impossible at all. But a good batting deck. Seen a mountain of runs from Hong Kong, China, and now Nepal as well. They've come to fight. Oh, that's gone. A very, very long way this time. Arif Sheikh. They're loving it, the Nepal fans. The flags are flying. The umpire gets his arms in the air again. That's back to back sixes for Nepal. Nasrul Arana, a bit too straight, and wow. Arif Sheikh picked his gap, picked the bones out of that. Got to say, cold weather, cold water, and all these maximums, I'm starting to lose my voice. And it's only day one of Nepal's tour to Hong Kong, China. Look at that, you can see the signage, you can see more fans coming in. Yeah, smart move, sir. Wearing a petticoat. It's not enough seating. Some of them, they're on their feet. They know that we've got a real game on here at TKRG. Nepal, you've got to give them credit. They've come out all guns blazing in this second innings, making a real run for this target. 
We have a sh short delay as well. Yeah, it seems like we've lost the ball maybe into those bushes there. So a new ball coming out to the middle. And a discussion again between Rohit Poundel and Arif Sheikh, a punch of the gloves. There's no reason why, with wickets in hand, Nepal can't chase 11 or 12 runs and over in the last five overs. We've seen it time and time again here at the Tinkwong Road Recreation Ground. There's no need to panic. You can go at two runs a ball in the last five. Nasrul Arana, can he storm back? An educated edge down to deep third, and it beats deep third. Six, six, four in the last three balls for Nepal. Look at that. In spite of that second wicket falling, they just keep coming at Hong Kong, China. So power followed by finesse. Look at that. Beautiful in total control of that. Out of shake. Getting a round of applause there. But pressure on Hong Kong. 10 off the over in the first two balls. Goes straight. That's beautiful. Doesn't beat Kutsia though. Only one. Yeah, did well there. Kutsia running around from a whitish long on to cut that off. Yeah, on your screen there, Martin Kutsia. Said it at the start of the innings. I'm going to stick to that. I think Hong Kong, China, the home side, still with their noses in front, but not by much. Baudel on 23. Quick single. Easy single. That's what he's so good at doing, Rohit Baudel. Even when he's not picking up the boundaries, he finds a way to get to the other end. He finds a way to turn ones into twos. Such a busy player, the Nepal skipper. It's hard to believe that he's still in his early 20s. Made his Nepal debut at the tender age of 15. And now he's leading the country. Playing a miss. A valuable, rare dot ball there for the home side. A good gas, bent his back, got some extra assistance off the surface. One ball left now in this over. Twelve runs off it. Can Nepal go big? Can they make it a 16, 18 run over? Worked away in the leg side. They'll get at least one for this. Deep square leg does one, does well rather, <laughs> to keep it down to just a single. Good over though for Nepal, nine overs gone, it's 92 for two. Yeah, got a wicket in his first over, did Naz. That over, a very different story. That's gone down the ground. In fact, past the keeper for a valuable boundary. Nepal, they just keep the boundaries coming, don't they? And again, he goes behind the wicket. Does the right-hander. Intelligent stuff. I think he was looking to go down the track at first, but adjusted well. I think that edge down to deep third, it looks a lot more educated on second glance. Again down the leg side, Yasam again a wide delivery. There's Az Khan, you can see him just warming up here, the right arm seamer. Worked away in the leg side. Bowled that a little bit slower 
And did awesome. He's getting warm, isn't he? As Arz Khan made a good contribution with the bat as well. Playing a supporting act to Barber. Cut away, backward point, we'll keep it down to one. Yeah, but like I said, Ezaz Khan, 21 off 11 towards the end in that first innings. He's going to have to do something with the ball as well. Useful dot, very useful dot. Just fired that in, did Yasim. Been an expensive spell for him so far. One for 1.4 overs, rather. None for 19. Goes leg side again. Does he find a boundary? No. Well done, deep square leg. In spite of the spin there, keeps it down to one. It's 100 up as well here for Nepal. 100 for two. Still one ball left in the 10th over. Bang down the ground as straight as a ramrod again. Another four here for the Nepal skipper. What a stylish way to close out the 10th over at the halfway mark. Nepal. They're going hard. They're 104 for two. Let's take a look at that replay again. Yasim, I think he was trying to go full, straight, and quick. Yeah, not full enough. Easy pickings there. Nepal, look at that, 104 for two. I think if you gave them that scoreline at the start of the innings, they would have taken it. The spectators, they're happy. They're getting into this contest. We have more than 200 people packed in right now at the Tin Kuang Road Recreation Ground. They can't wait for the second half of this innings. Neither can I. I'm going to take a short break, but do join us in around a minute and a half for the second half of this enthralling chase. Monty Desai of the Nepal team here with us. What a pleasure. There have been fans pouring in today. So much love and support. How do you feel about being here in Hong Kong today? Very excited. Uh, wonderful small T20 ground. And the pitch is really batting friendly. So, And also the Nepali fans here. So overall the atmosphere is really great. 
The success story for the past year has been incredible. The list of achievements for the team has been incredible. The million dollar question, what's your magic formula? There's no magic formula, to be honest. Uh, healthy conversation with each and every player, uh, deep diving into the roles. If there is any confusion around the roles, again, to have long conversations and clear it up. And then uh, just about uh, making sure that everyone uh, plays their role in the phases and get us the win which we look for, but sometimes we don't cross the line. But yes, I mean, we try to compete every single game. Fair enough. And, you know, what What would you like to say about the competitiveness of the associate nations? You know, teams playing, uh, you know, above above Nepal, below. What are what are your thoughts on that? I mean, again, against Hong Kong, we know that they have some great strikers. Babar Hayat, the way he scored today, runs. Uh, it was lovely to watch. Uh, I think associate teams in T20s are very competitive. So the more the T20 format is uh, as an opportunity for every single country, it will become more competitive in terms of destinations or the associates. Fantastic. And the last question, what would uh, what changes would you like to see in the associate cricket? Well, I mean, I'm really happy with the Bermuda grass, good pitches out here. So if you can have similar pitches back home as well for us, and as far as uh, associate cricket is concerned, I think more T20 games like this all around the, the world with the... Uh, Test nations and associate countries, that will be really nice. Fantastic. Well, we have a lot of questions, but I know coaches got to get back to the dugout. So thank you so much. Thank it was you. a pleasure having you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for joining us in the commentary as the game back underway. Aaron Bush with you. Azaz Khan, as we expected, into the attack for Hong Kong, China from the Argyle Street end. There's Ad Khan down there, stuck with all the Nepal fans. Maybe giving him some advice, having a chat. He's always having a chat down there. Loves to be down at deep third. He's inside the circle at the moment, so we have to yell. And so Zaz Khan steams in again over the wicket. Goes the scoop, gets onto it. That's a beautiful stroke for four. Coming across the stumps. We saw one attempted by Anshaman Ruth in the first innings. Unsuccessful, that one. Highly successful. And the crowd goes mad again. The run's continuing to flow for Nepal. That would almost been wide outside off had he not moved across, but he shuffled across beautifully. Shake getting another boundary. Moves to 26. And as Azaz Khan put this one. That one's whipped away high. That one's not going to be four. That's going to be six. All the way. Huge. Backward of square. Maximum. And the 50 partnership up between the captain, Podal, and Shake. 52 of just 25 deliveries. Four fours. Three sixes, including this one. Bang. Gone. Massive. And now the crowd is really getting into it. And the Paul flags up, fluttering around. Just before the drinks break, the computer projector had Nepal at 27%. It's now up to 49%. This game is on. This one whipped away. They've got protection of Tik Iqbal. There's that little kick up we saw in the first innings as well, but he read it, kept it to a single. 13 off the over, one ball remaining. We've seen some big partnerships today from both sides now. This one, very important for Nepal. So we head towards the end of this one-off friendship series before we get into the Tri-Nation starting tomorrow from 1.30 p.m. Hong Kong time. Nazar's Khan finishing off the 11th. That's gone high, but it hasn't got enough on it. Will it be caught? Getting underneath it. Diving forward, takes the catch, gets the breakthrough. Azaz Khan pumps the arm, gets the wicket. The third wicket falls for Nepal. They're 117 for three. Dananje Rao running in off the ropes. Diving effort. Huge breakthrough. The captain's got to go for 30. Look at this. Watched it all the way into the midst. The youngster, Dananje Rao. Took some stick bowling, but does the job in the field. Azaz Khan also going for 13 before that wicket, but it doesn't matter. The partnership broken. Third wicket down, Nepal 117 for three.
nine overs remaining. Sundeep Jura coming to the crease to join Shake. End of the over, so he'll be at the non-striker's end. You can see him on screen now. Huge breakthrough for Hong Kong China. And with that wicket, Isan Khan back into the attack from the softball ground end. Well, just the one over. And boy, was it expensive. 17 coming from it. But now with the breakthrough, break the partnership. Captain Nazakat Khan's pulled the trigger and brought his master bowler back on. Number 88. And starts with the boundary. Shake puts another one on the books. Nice and fine. Nothing Azaz Khan could do to cut that one off inside the circle. Just push that well down, full toss down leg, easy pickings. That one's a better delivery, beats the outside edge this time. Just a big loosener to start with from Asad Khan, but this one here was much better as he comes in again, quicker, faster, runs on the leg side. Work to do for DJ, keep it to a single, yes he does. Bring Sandeep Jora on strike. Another youngster, just 22 years of age. And get his vest. He's gone off for a single there. Lucky. He was sent back. Trying to get off the mark. No run there. It's a youngster. He's 22 years old, Sandeep Jora. But he's played 22... 20 eyes so far. A little chat between Shake and Jura. Get the running understood. Averages 15.53 in his 20 matches, 16 innings. Now he'll get off the mark. They're going to push hard. Could be a chance of two. Yes, there is. Well run. Seven runs off the over, one ball remaining. The way that Nepal's been hitting lately. It's quite a tidy over so far. And it'll end with a dot. Just the seven coming from it. 12 overs done. Nepal 124 for three. They need another 89 runs for victory in eight overs. Zaz Khan will continue from the Argyle Street end. Went for 13 runs off his first five deliveries, but the fifth, the sixth one, that was the one that mattered. Got the wicket, got the breakthrough. Sent the captain, Rohit Podal, back to the sheds. But he has the big hitting shake on strike, 38 off 20. Four fours, two sixes. That's gone high. That's not going to go all the way. Martin could see it getting underneath it. Could this be another wicket? It is! Azaz Khan gets back-to-back -back wickets from back-to-back -back balls. The fourth wicket falls for Nepal. They're 124 for four. Azaz Khan into the attack. He's got rid of the two devastating batters for Nepal. Powerful first, shake second. Both skied up in the air. Good catch again, Martin could see a safe hands. And Shake has gone. Fourth wicket down and Azaz Khan is on a hat trick. Gulshan Jha coming to the crease. Number six. His team losing two quick wickets to the bowling of Azaz Khan, who will 
now be bowling a hat-trick ball. Got a wicket with the last ball of his first over. He got a wicket with the first ball of his second over. Field changes, they're bringing Martin Kutsia inside the circle. The left-hander, looks like Azaz Khan's going to go around the wicket. They've pushed fine leg back, deep third on the ropes. Here it is, the hat-trick ball. Watchful, tip and run stuff, gets through. Yes, pushed the field hard there to get the first single and get off the mark. You can see on the screen, 88 of 46. It's getting very close to needing two runs a ball here, Nepal. Back over the wicket to Jura. Lofted. This could be a wicket as well. He gets another wicket as Azkan puts the arms up. He's got three off four deliveries. Nepal lose another. Jora out for two. Nepal 125 for five. See on the replay. Outside off. Moving away. Lots of bottom hand. And the captain, Nazaka Khan, makes no mistake. Didn't get his hat trick, but he's got three for one off four balls. Nazaz Khan. This rate, Nazaz Khan is trying to take Bubba Hyatt's player of the match if Hong Kong get over the line here. Bubba, of course, getting 110 off 49, but Nazaz Khan now has a three for and 21 not out. He's having quite a day out there in the middle here at Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground. Five down now. Yadav coming to the crease. Still three balls remaining in the 13th. It's been action packed. Field set. Could see him moves back to long on on the ropes. Deep square leg as well. Leaves that one alone because it's wide. Still only three balls into the 13th. And you got deep square leg. Long on. Deep third. Fine leg. Martin could see it long on there. The four on the ropes. There's also one out at deep extra cover. DJ Rao. That's a good drive. Keeps it along the ground. Single to Nazaka Khan. Zaz Khan has managed to turn this game on its head where Nepal, as I said, the projector on the computer suggesting 49% chance that's now plummeted down to 11%. Five wickets in hand, though. Around the wicket to the left-hander again. Whipped around in the air. That's going to be a boundary. Four runs down into the supporters as well. And don't they love it? Look at that. Got the ball. Tries to put it in his pocket. Says, no, nah, just joking. You can have it back. We want to see another boundary down there. So he's got lots going on. Straying down leg this side, this time. Under the hip. Easy pickings. Bushan Jha. One ball left in the 13th. And that's a better line from Zaz Khan. Finishes with a dot. Two wickets off that over, plus seven runs. After 13, Nepal, 131 for five.
电量不足，请充电。As Sun Khan to continue from the softball ground and two overs, none for 24. Unlike him, expensive and no wickets. He's still got two overs left and anything can happen. The new batter, Yadav, on strike. Fires in quick, fast, appeals, big appeal from Essan. The finger goes up. I said he doesn't take long to get into the game and get a wicket. He'd gone for 24 off his first two overs. Then bang, comes in in his third over, gets the wicket, gets the breakthrough. Nepal won 31 for six. And shuffling back into the crease. Umpire John Pakash gave it a good long hard think. In the end, finger went up. Wilson Jar has to depart. Six wickets down now. Troubling times for Nepal. Hang on. A no ball's been called. There is confusion. Starting with me. Now, what's the call here? It's called no ball after the wicket has been given. I'm not sure what the no ball was for. Discussion between umpires. We'll have to wait and see. They're still trying to find out exactly what has happened here. Still discussions going on. I can assure you, we here in the commentary position have very little idea of what has happened here. We're looking to get some confirmation soon. But at the moment, the game is that a pause? I think six wickets down for Nepal, perhaps five. What we did see is we saw the finger go up for an LBW. This we saw. We've also seen an arm go out for a no ball, but that was after the finger went up. And so discussions continue between umpires Niaz Ali and John Prakash. Once they've sorted that out, we'll try to bring you what the rule was. The crowd is hushed as they also wait. Okay, we're going to have a look at the replay here while we wait. Appeal. Finger goes up. Decision made. But then, a no ball is called. And the decision is, in the end, out. Much discussion. Gulshan's still out there asking. Um, he's talking at the non-strikers then. Yadav's still not sure if he's out or in. Looks like he's out. Well. In the end, Yadav is walking off LBW to Esan Khan. As soon as we know exactly what happened out there. We'll get that information to you. As it is, Rashid Khan's coming to the crease. Hassan Khan has one wicket to his name after two overs of getting punished. Went for 24 off two.
Oh, now there's all sorts of confusion as Yadav is coming back, perhaps. I Look, I have absolutely no idea what's happened here. So it looks like that LBW is being cancelled. Umpire Prakash signalling dead ball. I'm looking around the commentary position and absolutely no one has any idea what just happened. Myself included. But as it is, Esad Khan has no wickets to his name. Yadav is back out there in the middle. Rashid Khan has returned to the tent. And we shall continue with Nepal at 131 for five. We should have an update very shortly. The information is coming across to our commentary position. In the end, we continue on. And all of a sudden, we've got to stop in play. Chat between Esan Khan and Jamie Atkinson now. Now a chat between Jar and Yadav. Lots of chats. Lots of confusion. Certainly for Yadav. He left, came back on, left, came back on. Now he's out there again facing Esan Khan. No run there. Okay, continuing on. Whatever's happened's happened. It's in the books. Now Esan Khan. He thought he got a wicket, but didn't. But it's bowled three dot balls to start with. The first one wiped off the scoreboard. That was a dead ball, but he's bowled three dot balls since. That's in the air. He's going to get the wicket anyway. Takes the catch. Azaz Khan. What a crazy, crazy over. In the end, Esan Khan gets his man three balls later than he thought. Yadav out for one, caught Azaz Khan hiding behind square. And now Rashid Khan comes to the crease. All right, the very long and complicated dismissal of Yadav has now been explained as they get the field set for Rashid Khan. I will tell you, actually, we might just wait to the over break because it's going to take some explaining. As it is, Esan Khan's got his first wicket. Oh, and zips one through as well. He's now gone for 24 of his first two overs and dots and a wicket this over with one ball remaining. Back ball in hand, Esan Khan, number 88. Can't keep him out of the action. And that's lofted in the air. It's not going to carry. They'll get a single ruining Esan Khan's maiden over wicket maiden but just the one coming from it crazy over 14 done nepal 132 for six jay dancing honey coming back in to the commentary position and jay all sorts of chaos in that over yeah so i think just to clarify things what we saw was uh, just the invoking of what's known as the stephen finn rule so obviously firstly it was given out because it was adjacent i think there's no doubt about that we're all in agreement about that but then what caused the confusion is confusion over whether or not Esan Khan, at the point of delivery, knocked off a one of the bales. As we saw on the earlier replay as well, he was quite far away from knocking down any of the bales, whether with his foot or with his hand, which is why it was then signaled no ball, after which the umpires had a discussion and decided that the bale was already off, at which point John Prakash did clarify that it was indeed out 
but then Hong Kong China withdrew the appeal. There you have it, explaining it all, Jay Dantinghani as Azaz Khan with three wickets to his name. Bowling his third over, three for 21. And he's changed the game single-handedly, Azaz Khan. I think that's the big story as well, Azaz with those three wickets. What a performance. You saw him warming up as well at around the halfway point. And an inspired move to bring him back into the attack. You mentioned that in the last overs, in spite of that controversial moment. Well, Bebeki was out not long after. Round the wicket, Zaz Khan, big fresh airy, swing and a miss. Good delivery from the Zaz Khan, and kudos to the Hong Kong China team with the confusion going on. Eventually, they withdrew their appeal, which is why Yadav came back out to the crease. Didn't matter in the end. Four balls later, Yadav had to depart anyway. Zaz Khan continues from the Argyle Street end. Short, in the air. It should fall safe, I think. I don't think anyone's gonna get in. Yo, just falling short. Are they gonna come back for a second? A direct hit would have been very, very close. And by very close, I think out. Lux of Fortune, that one went up in the air for a long time, but DJ Rauch not being able to get in there off the ropes. Good throw in. Bubba Hyatt out there. Almost getting a cheeky run out out of it. Two on the board though for Nepal as they try to get the runs going again. That run rate required now up over 14. That one's lofted straight. One bounce to the captain, Nazaka Khan. Oh, chancing their arm here, Nepal, with only four wickets in hand, needing more runs, but. A lot of bottom hand, falling short a couple of times this over now. Two balls remaining. And go back over the wicket now to Rashid Khan. Angling in. He wants a single. And they will get it. All the fielders back on the ropes. Mazaka Khan's actually come in from a long way away to pick that one up. It was a long off. Is it dribbled? One ball remaining in the 15th. Jar on strike. Edge, gone, gets another wicket. Azaz Khan has four. Seventh down for Nepal at the end of the 15th. They're 137 for seven. Azaz Khan, 21 not out with the bat. Now four for 25 off his three overs. Watch that one again. Round the wicket to the left-hander. He took wide, gets a big edge. Great take there from Jamie Atkinson with gloves on. And the seventh wicket falls for Nepal. They're in a world of hurt now with five overs remaining. I'm going to jump out of commentary and take you through to the end. It will be Jay Dantinghani. Yeah, I tell you what, Aaron Bush, that was an eventful commentary spell for you. A lot of wickets, a bit of controversy as well with that ultimately withdrawn appeal. You got to give credit to the home side as well. Good sportsmanship withdrawing their appeal. I got to say, had they not withdrawn the appeal, the decision it would have stood, and, and rightfully so. That man again, Esan Khan, in the thick of the action, just moments ago. Bang, that's in the air, deep mid-wicket, takes it, easy as pie there. The man in the deep making no mistake, I think that's Anshi Rath over there. Yeah, another catch there for the safe Anshi Rath, eight wickets down now for Nepal. 
little under five overs left. And this chase has started so promisingly, but it's just running out of steam here. Another wicket falls this time. Rasid Khan, the talented Rasid Khan, walks back to the dugout for three. Now walking in at number nine, Akash Chand. 137 for eight after 15.1. Yeah, you don't like to see this as a Nepal supporter. But you can't put that much blame on the batters. They've had to go big at such a high required rate. I think where this game was lost to us in those middle overs in the first innings. Straight back to Asan. Now Hong Kong, they're into the lower order. It's tough to see how Nepal are going to make a fist of this now. Leading edge, going to get off the mark there, Chand. It's a single for him, but singles are not going to do it. Not at this stage. You have the feeling they need a big 25 run over at this stage. Oh, he's gone big. Is it long enough? No, it's Anshi again, who settles under it and takes another catch. And that's nine wickets down now for Nepal. Hong Kong, China, the home side have stormed back in style. Clinical stuff this from the man in red. Esan again, he strikes. He just didn't get the distance on this. Pratish, and he perished in the deep. He loves that, Anshi Rath. Brilliant stuff, the home side. Closing out this game, and it's shaping up to be a very convincing win. This for Hong Kong, China. Sagar Dakal, the last man in at 11. He joins Chand at the crease, who's on one off two. Now, Hassan, look at those figures. Three for 26. He's into his fourth over. They know how dangerous Essen can be. Nepal, wherever you're watching from, you've seen what Essen Khan can do. One wicket left. Can he close things out? Watchfully played, straight back to the bowler. Last ball of Essen spell. And it ends the way it started. Another dot ball, a fine day at the office for Essen Khan. Three for 26 in his four overs. Gets high fives from his teammates. Yeah, he's been fantastic, hasn't he? The evergreen Essen Khan with all that experience coming into play today. Three for 26 in his four overs. get the feeling it's just a matter of formalities now for Hong Kong China a reminder we only have one game in the friendship cup between Hong Kong China and Nepal tomorrow of course these two teams will square off at the HK men's T20i series that's a series that also features Papua New Guinea and we're gonna see PNG in action later on this week on Tuesday and Wednesday. Ezaz with the ball again. Ooh, inside edge, could have easily gone on to the stumps. Yeah, you can see his hands on his head, covering his mouth. Ooh, that could have been the winning wicket. And again, Ezaz just finding that movement back into the right-handers. It's been a common theme throughout his spell. 
It's that triple wicket over that really broke the back of this Nepalese run chase. Again another inside edge. And again it doesn't go on to the stumps. And yeah, gosh, Johnny can give it a bit of a whack. And yeah, struggling to find the middle of the bat so far. Very strong, a gust of wind just blew across us in the production unit. It's on the leg side, just short. That short fine leg fielder, ooh, a run out chance as well. Single there. Akash Chand moves on to two. Just deconstructing this performance from Hong Kong, China. Those barbers innings, that scintillating century. That's what's stolen the headlines, and that's why they're in such a strong position. Oh, he's trying to go full and straight there. Run out chance. Yeah, and a direct hit to close things out. Hong Kong have bowled Nepal out for 139 in the 17th over. Atik Iqbal, smile on his face with that direct hit. But what a fantastic performance from Hong Kong, China. They win by 73 runs against Nepal. A victory that would have set up by fantastic 110 of 49 balls from Barbara Hayat. An innings that included no less than 13 maximums that's the winning moment yeah big smiles for all those men in red it's been a clinical performance we spoke about barbers efforts with the bat but it was more than just that they bowled as a team three for 26 for Ehsan Khan four for 26 for Ehsan Khan those two bowlers really shut down the chase in the middle overs for Nepal yeah, but Nepal, they started so strong. They were 104 for two after 10 overs. But then, in the second half of this innings, they've lost 35 for eight. A dramatic collapse in the face of an ever-escalating required rate. Handshakes all around. This Friendship Cup has been played in really good spirits. We had Hong Kong, China as well, withdrawing their appeal earlier today. What a fantastic day it's been. So many fans, both Hong Kong, China and Nepal fans, coming out to support their respective teams here at TKRG. And it's so good, of course, to see Nepal back in Hong Kong after seven long years, this time in the T20i format. And they really came out swinging. They came out fighting in that second innings, did Nepal. And a special mention to Akash Chand as well, who took three wickets in that first innings. Very, very impressive. You could see that batting card as well for Nepal. 42 right up top for Binod Bandari. He was going strong. And it looked like Nepal were making a real run for that target. 30 for Paudel. Arif Sheikh as well, 38 off 21. Really good innings from him. But Ezaz Khan dismissing both those set players and picking up two more wickets, followed by Ehsan Khan's trio of wickets. And that's what helped bowl Nepal out for 139. And that bowling card. None for 29 for DJ Rao. Atik Iqbal getting one for 16. That first wicket included. Three for 26 for Ehsan. Four for 26 for Ezaz Khan. And just the one wicket for Nasr Arana, who took one for 15. So there you have it, the match summary. If you're just joining us, it's Hong Kong, China, who were put into bat. And courtesy that fantastic 110 from Babar Hayat, which included 13 maximums. It allowed them to get up to 212 for six, which proved more than enough against Nepal, who were bowled out for 139. Hong Kong, China, winning by a resounding margin of 73 runs. And so good to see, like I said, that Nepal support, all the fans.
They're seeing their heroes in action, some of them for the first time. So, so good to see. They're going to be there for that presentation ceremony as well, both young and old, everyone. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Yeah, we had 200, 250 people in here at TKRG. Estimates are that it could be almost double that amount tomorrow. So, so good to see. Cricket in Hong Kong, China. It's been a long, successful, and, well, highly popular home season so far. We've seen Japan, Canada, mainland China, of course, Malaysia, all of them down in HK during this home season, and now Nepal, and in a few days' time, PNG as well, Papua New Guinea. Two teams who are going to be in action at the T20 World Cup. Before that, they've, they're have down here in Hong Kong. And another look at that batch summary, a 73-run victory for Hong Kong, China. But that man right at the top of your screen, Barbara Hayat, 110 of 49. I struggle to see how anyone is going to take that player of the match award away from him. And what a moment as well for his father, who's in attendance here at TKRG. See when Barber raised that century, giving a big salute, a wave to his father, his proud father, who just saw his son do something very, very special today. And it's a pleasure when you're in attendance, when something like that happens. Barbara Hayat, no joke, 110 of 49 deliveries. Just getting set here for the presentation ceremony. But before that, it's worth just deconstructing what exactly went wrong here for Nepal. I mean, the scorecard kind of tells you everything. That first innings, 212 for six. It was always going to be a very tough proposition when they came out to bat second. In spite of that, they got themselves into a good position, reaching 104 for two at the halfway mark. But after that, after the drinks break, that's when things started to fall apart for the visitors. I think the biggest issue for them was that triple wicket over from Azaz Khan. He picked up one more wicket, of course, as ours to finish on four for 26. We said that as well at around that power play stage. Hong Kong, China, they're very good at bowling in the middle overs. It's not easy getting them away. And that prophecy turned out to be true. A big win for the home side. A victory by 73 runs. And it looks like we're almost ready here. And it looks like Aaron Bush is indeed out there. Take it away, Aaron. Thanks, Jay. What a fantastic friendship series we've had today here at Ting Kong Road Recreation Ground. Hong Kong, China v Nepal. The first time we've seen Nepal in town in seven years and a great display we had of T20 international action. Unfortunately for the visitors, their first game here ended in a loss. But uh, lessons to be learned and we go into the Tri-Nations tomorrow with both teams looking forward to it. We'll have a chat to the captain from Nepal, Rohit Bodal. Come in, have a chat with us. Thank you very much. Rohit, unfortunate today. Just the runs on the board early for Hong Kong sort of sealed the game for you. I think uh, as a bowling unit, uh, in the beginning we did a decent job, uh, especially with the ball, a uh, new ball, uh, GC, uh, Gulson and everyone bowled really well. In the death over, I thought, uh, in the second half, I think uh, Barber also played really well, uh, credit must goes to, go to him also. So uh, the, uh, the area where we need to improve is uh, the de death over and uh, as a batting unit, I thought 
the first half we did a decent job and after my wicket i thought um, the, the, uh, there were no partnership so in that area i think we, we can improve yeah well, we're talking about that at the halfway mark Nepal, the computer projecting 49% chance of victory because you were out there, Sheikh was out there, big scoring, and then as the wickets fell, it sort of fell away in the end. Yeah, I thought that was a crucial wicket of mine, uh, especially the partnership were going well, and in that over also 13 runs were made, so I think uh, the, the, that shot was not needed at that moment, so yeah, I, th I thought that was the turning point. Well, thanks for coming down for the Friendship Series one day. We've got you coming back again tomorrow, same time, 1.30pm. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. And now it's time for the Player of the Match Award and to present that, it is the Chairperson of Cricket Hong Kong China, Bergy Shroff. Bergy, thanks for joining us and there could only be one winner today. Of course, the big hitting 110 runs from Baba Hyatt. Okay, Baba, let's have a chat about that innings. You've come off the Qatar series, winning it in the Super over, then came out today and 110 off 49. It must have felt pretty good out in the middle. Yeah, obviously, I think uh, this was much needed innings from me. I think in the past, I think three, four games, I was getting good score, but didn't end up scoring big enough. So I think it credit goes to the coaches and all everybody who have supported me. I think I've been working hard on my uh, in the net. So I think that came off today very well. Yes, it was a big innings. You didn't mind the cold out there today? It was okay for you? Yeah, I think we've been playing in this weather for very, such a long time, I guess. But last we played against uh, Malaysia and all the uh, Canada, and then so I think we've been playing in this weather. I think the weather was I think a bit cold for us, but I think I think it's good for me that I've scored 100 today. Yeah, fantastic innings and a worthy player of the match. It is Bubba Hyatt. Congratulations, Bubba. We'll see Bubba again tomorrow playing in the game against Nepal, the first game of the tri Nation series. Now to present the Friendship Cup, we have the Consul General of Nepal in Hong Kong, Udaya Bahadur Ranamaga. Please come across, Consul General. And the winner of the Friendship Series Cup, of course, Hong Kong, China, and the captain, Nazaka Khan. Nazaket, a good win first up in the Friendship Series going into the Tri-Nations tomorrow. The team happy? Yes, very happy. You know, we've been uh, playing really good cricket uh, in past as well. And, you know, today the boys have showed, especially our batting, first to seven, you know, we have settled down our lineup. And, you know, uh, players are taking their responsibilities as well. And today, again, uh, in bowling as well, we have shown that second half we did really well. Yeah, in that first half of the bowling innings up to the drinks break, it was very even and then Azaz Khan came in and uh, sort of changed the game. Well, you know, in this smaller ground, you know, we knew that they are going to go hard because they have very good uh, uh, batters as well, Nepal. So, yeah, we knew that, but we, we stayed calm and we know that one, one wicket will break their partnership and that's where we're going to get the momentum. And momentum you have going into the tri Nation starting tomorrow for 1.30pm. Congratulations again, winner of the Friendship Series Cup, Hong Kong, China. And that ends the Friendship Cup. We're going to throw back to the commentary position with Jay Dancing Honey. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. You heard it there from Nazakat Khan. All we needed is that one wicket, that one breakthrough to really start to dominate that second innings. And a clinical performance here from the home side, a 73-run victory for Hong Kong, China. But definitely the headline act, Barbara Hayat, with that 110 of 49 deliveries. Fantastic stuff from Hong Kong, China. And a great way to kick off the tail end of this home season for Hong Kong, China. Another leading associate coming down to Hong Kong, China. But it's the home side who take home the Friendship Cup. Nonetheless, on behalf of the Cricket Hong Kong China in-house production crew, I want to thank all of you for tuning in wherever you're from. 
And do join us at the same time tomorrow for the start of the HK Men's T20i Series. Signing off, it's Jay Danskani.